sleeping off a monster hangover. Well, that's the kind of thing that I like to hear. Uh, I hope it was a good <laughs> night out, man. No, I literally mean a monster hangover. A, a, I had oh, right. three, I a monster drink. three monsters last yesterday to try Why to stay do that to yourself. <laughs> it crashes you, man. It crashes you. Well, welcome to everyone who's tuned Oh, hi, we're live. <laughs> yeah, we're just live. Fuck it. <laughs> it's like, I could, I could do my intro. I'm just going to let ass keep rolling. <laughs> Hi, how you doing, everyone? So, yeah, it's the drinker, and it's us, and we're here for happy hour number thirty-eight, where we're going to be talking about the glory that is Tropic Thunder. Like, remember when? Remember when Hollywood was able to laugh at itself, and remember when they were able to produce genuinely funny movies that you could really enjoy? Yeah, well, th this is an example, and this might be one of the last great mm. funny comedies out of Hollywood. Uh, Two thousand and eight, I think it came out, and yeah. God damn, what a film it is. <laughs> like I think Downey had had Downey just finished Iron Man and then did, I think it did, Tropic, been. did Tropic Thunder after Iron Man. And because he was still because Iron Man was his comeback film. Yeah, and he probably did well, he wouldn't have known so, when he was so, making Yeah, so Tropic, Tropic Thund Thunder. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh so I think he I think he said, you know. He was kind of thinking about, is it a risk that I'm taking here? Because, you know, I'm black facing up and, and stuff. And, uh, oh, man, I got to say, I got to say, this was just a glorious film. It absolutely was. And, you know, it's funny because every few years, like a new generation of people get offended by oh, Robert Downey so Jr. Good. doing blackface. It's like they just discover this film existed. And, you oh know, they get enraged by it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you'll get like this this plethora of love like at the end of endgame there was this plethora of love for tony stark because he you know s sacrifices himself yeah and all these people on twitter are just like posting all these oh my god i cry so much when tony died and there's all these like homages and suddenly out of nowhere there's some 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 zoom would just be like um oh my god has anyone seen this <laughs> it's yeah. like robert downey jr in black face and drop yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is the thing, and it it demonstrates just how little they understand about this film and what it was about. Because, you know, the whole point of him being in blackface for this was never to like denigrate black people or black culture or anything like that or disrespect people. It was to make fun of white people's perception of black culture. You know, the way he acts like such a stereotypical mm. black guy in the Vietnam War. Um, and and to make fun of like pretentious actors that think they can play like any yes. role, like regardless yes. of being totally unsuited to it. That's uh, that's what I saw. I saw I saw the the pretentiousness of of the actors because they all they're all pretentious apart from Kevin. Kevin's the only non pretentious one. Kevin's and, the MVP of this fucking movie. Yeah. He's like the glue that holds <laughs> everyone together because he's like the only guy that's read the fucking script. He's, he's, read the script, went, he's read the book. Uh, yeah, he, he went to boot camp. So he did the boot camp. Back. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's that the, it's the pretend, because they all have like Robert Downey Jr. is the one who who deals with the the race casting. Uh, ben Still is the one that deals with the challenged this the the physically <laughs> challenged the, simple Jack. Yeah, yeah, the simple. You know, he's the one that deals with that. Jack Black's the um, egotistical, you know, drug addict. You know, he's the Chris Farley, Sean Penn, uh, Chris Penn type of, you know, James Belushi, Jim Belushi type of character. Uh, and, um, you know, then you've got your, your black character that's all all about, yeah. you know, crushing Brandon, pussy. It's Brandon the rap Jackson. game. Yeah, it's, you know, live or die. And, you know, it's all that kind of stuff. So it's they all kind of have their stereotypes, apart from Kevin, that they uh, they try to live up to. And, of course, they're all they're all fakes. Every every one of them is a fake. Yeah, well, they've all got their insecurities. Like, like Tug Speedman is like a fading action star, and his last couple of movies have flopped. So he's on shaky ground, and obviously tried to branch out by doing Simple Jack, and it was a colossal disaster. So <laughs> he, he's he's really like his confidence has been shaken, and he, he wants to be taken You'll seriously. You'll be there in my <laughs> dreams, but may make my eyes. River. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Harley Quinn dialogue, but with a bit more stuttering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I just love the unashamed, 
uh, the unashamed. Um, they, th I mean, they just they threw themselves in. There was there was no like holding back. You either had to go nope. full full retard. They went full retard, yeah. or uh, or not really. And and that's that was the beauty <laughs> of it. Like when um uh when Al Pacino drops the the N word, and uh, Robert Downey Jr. just like grabs him and holds him. And just, like, oh, it's so I was going to talk just kept us down for four hundred years. It's been He's a like, long time the climbing fuck? this hill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> what the it's because he slaps he slaps the guy around and the guy tries to punch him and yeah he just catches his fist <laughs> yeah. <and> it <laughs> yeah that <laughs> word that word has kept us down for 400 years the, like, the way fuck. he plays this character is just incredible like <laughs> it just you can't take your eyes off him no. like when he's trying to distract bit um tug speedman when he's like he wants the map off him yeah he you starts asking shredded. him like how he get <laughs> Workout tips. <laughs> I want to get shredded like Rambo, but Rambo two, not Rambo one. Where he's all big yeah, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but even when Ben Stiller's speaking, he's what's like, this, "What's the speaking? secret? What's this? Well, it's all about dying." It's just like yeah. grabs the map. Yeah, hey, fuck you, guy. What's about pine pineapples? I do like. It. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love at the beginning as well where, where they're acting in the mo the, the make movie they're trying to make. And he's gonna go back for uh, for Ben Stiller when he gets wounded. He gets shot like two dozen times. You just see him like ah, ah. <laughs> squibs just going They're off totally all over ripping him. platoon off there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's just like, give me some cover, fire, you limp dick motherfuckers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And he's just like running with his gun, like choo, choo. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just none of them firing a weapon like a soldier. They just because they haven't trained. You know, they they haven't been to boot camp. They haven't done any research or anything apart from kevin <laughs> so yeah. and it's just, clearly you know a lot of it's obviously based on apocalypse now and just like directors true. that are completely in over their heads and like trying to wrestle with this <laughs> ridiculous m movie that they don't have the ability to control and you know the stars are all being prima donnas uh and yeah you you know you get that sense of it um and yeah like when we were talking about all the different things that these actors are wrestling with you know um Ben Stiller's wanting to be taken seriously. Um, Jack Black is trying to branch out from just the, the shitty like comedies, which are just like, yeah, let's yeah, laugh just at these guys comedy, yeah. Fat. yeah, yeah, and it's it's literally just the Nutty Professor. I think mm. they based that on. Um, and yeah, Kurt Lazarus is um, he's got no real personality of his own. He's just he hides behind all his roles. So they've all got things that they're wrestling with, and I I think that's like. By the end of the movie, they've all like they've all overcome their demons, you know. So they do have little character arcs throughout this film. So it's it's nice. It get, you get payoff to all this stuff. But they do it. They do it. They set up those characters' traits perfectly at the be before the film has even begun. When they they have a trailer for each of the main characters, apart from Kevin. Yes. So, so they they explicitly show like Al Pacino comes on. And he's all about booty sweat, and you know I'm I'm fucking all these these uh, women that you know I'm I'm oh living for the booty. I'm living for the pussy. All this uh, nut bars, you know, grab it yourself a nut bar and some booty juice and all that. And he's gay, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's, he's, gay. he's a closeted gay. He's a, it's, yeah, because uh, <laughs> like at one point you get it, don't you? When. Uh... They're, they're talking about sweethearts back home. He's like, yeah, I got someone. <laughs> yeah. And Robert, and Robert Downey Jr. is like, oh, you just uh, you just got to tell her what you know what how you feel about her. And it's like, what's her name? And the guy just goes, Lance. <laughs> <laughs> and you just hear Robert Downey Jr. go, what? Well, Lance, what the <laughs> fuck did I just hear? <laughs> did you just say Lance? I said, I said Nance. I said Nance. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it sounds awfully like like Lance to me, and then it's just like it's okay. We all go a little gay sometimes. It's Hollywood, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's Hollywood, man. Uh, uh, it's so accurate. It's scary. You can tell these guys have actually played the game. But I, I, I think, I think the bit that I, I uh, like, totally like, I chuckled, I chuckled at the booty juice stuff. It was like you know, <laughs> and then when it went on to Scorcher. So it's like, you one when the earth stops revolving in 2013 and the earth just scorch you on. Then it goes scorch you two, three, four, five. And it's like, but now he's back. And then instead of the earth being complete ball of fire, 
it's now just all iced over. Yeah. It's like, but this time it's different. And instead of one baby and one gun, yeah. two babies and two guns. And because it's got ice instead of fire, it's different. It's like, no, it's exactly the same. Yeah, because it's, it's exactly like the, same. the man who made a difference five times before <laughs> must make a difference again. Yeah, it's going to make a difference again. And then you just right at the end of the trailer, it goes like, here we go again. Yeah. Again. <laughs> again. <laughs> it's like, here we go again with the end screen. And he goes, this winter, again. <laughs> and uh, the sa- Satan's Alley was just, oh my God, that was just so perfect. That was practically a movie. And I'd like to have seen that film, <laughs> yeah, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see Tropic Thunder. I just went and rented out Devil's Alley. Uh, it's Satan's Alley instead. Yeah, uh, but that was if that was done just you know that was complete Oscar bait, uh, and it was just perfectly done the way that they you know five times Oscar winner uh, Kurt Lazarus, and then it was just like and a winner of MTV's Best Kiss of All, <laughs> Toby <laughs> Maguire. <laughs> I just love how Robert Downey Jr. is properly going for it as well. Like, you know, they're, <laughs> Winner they're of the Blind they Monkey Award eyes. from China. <laughs> yeah. They lock eyes at one point, and Robert Downey Jr. is just looking at him with such aching, like, longing, yeah. you know? <laughs> and then he's just like, no. And Kid Toby's like, <laughs> just like, yeah. sticks the- and he starts playing with his beads like there ain't no beads. Yeah. And then, as soon as Enigma hit with sadness, I was. Absolutely roaring with laughter. <laughs> That's the music we used to rut to at fucking uni, man. That was uh, get the girl yeah. back. You'd either put a bit of, uh, ironically, you'd either put a bit of George Michael uh, on, uh, you know, uh, older, bit of older from George Michael, or you'd put a bit of Enigma on, bit of sadness from, you know, get him in the mood. Yeah, but I mean, what's great, like, and what we've kind of talked about just there is you know this movie makes fun of essentially everyone and everything (laughs) but it does it all equally and it's not Mm. about uh, singling out any one group or anything like that and that's what makes it work so well it's not worried about offending people it doesn't set out to target anyone in particular but it has a good laugh at everybody and at its own expense you know it's a film you know, really about the hubris of Hollywood and, and how, like, easily things get fucked up behind the scenes. And I think it's great. Like, you could tell that the guys who wrote it and, and did this, you know, they've kind of lived through a lot of this stuff. And, yeah, it's obviously, like, exaggerated and simplified a little bit. But, like, the characters and stuff, like Len Grossman, um, oh. you absolutely know that's based on a real dude. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You could, you could tell that there's most likely a lot of in-jokes in this film that we yeah. we're not going to get the diet coke um, len grossman always with a diet coke uh yeah. there's gotta be there's gotta be something about that um i just love how he's just this fucking slob like he's fat he's got like great big hairy fucking yes, arms hairy, and chest that he yeah. always has on display he's bald and he's got glasses and he's played by tom cruise <laughs> like one of tom one cruise's of, like, the, best roles i've ever seen him in legit i mean honestly like you know, out of all the actors, I think the ones I found most funny were Robert Downey Jr. and Tom Cruise. And they're not even real comedy actors. Like, they're dramatic, serious actors, but they're just yes. having it up here and having fun. And I think it says kind of a lot, like, that they are more, they're more amusing than guys like Ben Stiller and Jack Black. Yeah, because, ben, yeah, Ben Stiller's a, I mean, you, I would say that when you think Ben Stiller, you would think comedy. And uh, when you see, this kind of subtlety that 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 uh, Robert Downey Jr. used. His facial expressions were just always like, "It's me," and then to be saying something completely inappropriate while, while smiling, you know? Why yeah. you gotta fuck me over like that, boy? You know? And then it's just like <laughs> they're just like leaning into you, like, uh, and it was just you'd just be howling away at them. Uh, yeah. And then Ben Stiller will would you know he'll do his 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 simple Jack and. It will be funny, but it's 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 not subtle. It's obvious, and it's meant to be obvious. And and uh, so it's those those little subtle moments. <laughs> like, well, like one of the to me, just one of the best lines and the best sequences in the whole thing with Robert Downey Jr. was when um, Tan is like saying, "Which farm? 
which where's your farm? What, what farm are you? And they, they just like gets the guns out and starts firing everywhere, and they're all like running away. And they just goes, "I'm a lead father, motherfucker." <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> and then he like crosses the crosses the M16s. Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's genius stuff, man. He's he's one of them guys. Like in this movie, you can't take your eyes off him because every minute he's doing something funny. Like even when he's just like waiting for someone else to talk, like he'll be staring at them like super intense. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know how to describe it. He's just got this flair for comedy. You'd never have expected it, but it works so fucking well. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, uh, when he when he uh, snaps out when when he's having that one-on-one -on -one with ben stiller and he's he's like you're afraid of you're afraid of who i'm afraid of no one you're afraid of you and then he sees the mirror it's like -da! <laughs> smashes the mirror because <laughs> just like the realization of i don't know who i am i'm not yeah. sergeant you know <laughs> takes the wig off i'm not father of marley <laughs> from, from <laughs> satan's alley <laughs> And so and then, yeah, he's got like the blonde hair and like the big intense blue eyes and just like still in blackface. I mean that he's got to be taking a piss out of Russell Crowe. Surely oh, yeah. that is taking a piss out of Russell Crowe there. Uh yeah. and the, and the bad be, boy. I think he's meant to be a bit of an amalgamation of like Russell Crowe and like Daniel Day Lewis. Um, uh, you know, like super intense Sean serious Penn. actors, like yeah, a bit of Sean yeah. Penn probably as well. Um, I like I, the way they actually take the piss out of a couple of actors, though, like Sean Penn. Like you could tell that 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 when they were taking the piss out of Sean Penn, it was like not kind of like I don't I don't know if it's too cold because they're friends with Chris Penn, weren't they? They were they were good friends with Chris Penn. I'm not sure. I couldn't tell you, man. Yeah, I mean, Chris Penn was in like quite a few of Ben Stiller's movies. Right. Okay. So um, I don't so I don't know if actually could it could just been friendly jibes, but it was like you know when. Sean Penn went full redone in 2001, left with nothing. <laughs> yeah, because oh, that 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 speech is just one of the legendary speeches in in movies. Just the way he delivers it, and like actually, what he's saying is really true as well. You know, when mm. he's talking about um, Rain Man, Rain no, Man, and look retarded, Arkham. retarded. He's not retarded. You know, he could do yeah. he could do math puzzles. He can like cut, count the cocktail sticks when they yeah. fall out of the air. Autism? Yes. Retardation? No. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, it's Forrest Gump. Slow? Yes. Retarded? Maybe. Got braces on his legs. The man can challenge the pants off Nixon. Yeah. And see that uh, ping pong? That's not retarded. Yeah. <laughs> We've totally got this stream demonetized, I can tell. I know, I know. <laughs> Already. Fuck there, it. Was, there was never going to be any hope with talking about Tropic Thunder. No, no, yeah. whatsoever. You know what? It's totally worth it, though. It's worth every penny that I've lost. <laughs> I don't care. This is one of those films you've got go to do justice. Just never go through retard. Yeah. Academy, yeah, he just goes into the academy. The academy, the academy don't like that. Doesn't get awards. Yeah. <laughs> what? 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 You never go full retard. He says it so serious as well. You know, he like, looks right he's at him. Five, he's a five-time Oscar winner. <laughs> yeah. You went full retard, man. He knows. He knows the uh, the limitations of what you can and can't get away. He's an Oscar bait. That, I mean, he's Oscar bait. The actor. That's what he is. He 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 always picks those roles which he knows the Academy uh, are gonna are gonna gravitate towards. You know, the gay monk in the Middle Ages. Uh, but he's gone so far and overboard now. He <laughs> he went under that <laughs> the skin the controversial skin pigmentation technique <laughs> to actually. <laughs> Because you see them injected him with like this like black you know tar <laughs> or something. It's like it'd be like pure distilled melanin or something. Like yeah, that. yeah, it's that's like what it would be. Straight into the skin, just straight, <laughs> straight into the cells, and wow. And he's like and hugging they're, his they're doctor looking at the, the mirror and they're coming out the operating theater, high five, and everyone <laughs> taking the bandages off. Yeah, woo, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's such a clever film, a film within a film. But even if they break the fourth wall because they say with Robert Downey, of course, he's a dude playing a dude that's playing another dude. Yeah. Now yeah. you could have said, oh well, that's because he was talking about the sergeant, Father O'Malley, and then and then Kirk Lazarus. 
But you could also take it as Robert Downey Jr. playing Kirk Lazarus, playing a character. Yep. So there's, yeah, there was, there's, yeah, there's little elements about that as there's, well. There's definitely, yeah, there's definitely meta to it. And, you know, it, it's totally fine. Um, and I, I love Danny McBride's character in it as well. Like, <laughs> just the fact he just fucking loves blowing things up. You know, that, like... <laughs> in, that bit Danny when, McBride, though, plays one character, and that's Danny McBride. Yeah, 100%, yeah. But when he's used properly, he's great. And, like, in this one where... You know, they're in a firefight and he's about to set off some charges that have been put in the jungle. <laughs> he just goes, big ass titties! Big <laughs> ass titties! Yeah. <laughs> and like the bit at the beginning when it's like the real movie that they're filming and like they, they, they let off the napalm and he's just standing there going, yeah, that's Mother <laughs> Nature pissing our pants! And there's two new Vietnamese guys with him. He's really like, got no one idea. guy's in the corner making a fucking sweater! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's there just knitting this guy in the corner and knitting away. This one dude tries to hand him a block of C4 and he's like, no, that's not what I want. Yeah, I want a, I want a detonator or whatever. That's C4, I want a detonator. I want a trigger. <laughs> yeah, but you got that's how you use Danny McBride real sparingly. Real yeah, yeah, sparingly. Yeah. Uh, just to do those kind of things and then go away. And, and the, the, I mean, it was great when it cut to the film, when they were actually filming the film so you saw all the peak steve coogan and everyone behind steve coogan and yeah. then you got the prima donna of ben stiller going i you know i meant to be crying but 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 kirk's crying and it's kind of putting me off not being able to well, cry it's yeah i mean his his thing is like he's a shit actor basically and he can't cry on command hmm. like whereas kirk's you know, Kirk's there, like, dribbling and, like, snot coming out his nose and like, bawling his eyes out, you know? <laughs> uh, and, yeah, Ben Stiller just cannot do it. You can see him trying to force tears out. It's not happening. Um, and yeah. again, by the end of the movie, he actually does cry. <laughs> like, he's found a way to do it. Oh, uh, there you go. That's what accolades are made of. That's what accolades yeah. are made of. Yeah. <laughs> real. T oh, you got yourself a real tear there. And the funny thing, of course, is the real tear is coming out of here. And he tear ducks here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so it was it was funny to the audience because the audience could tell that the tear itself was actually fake because it wasn't coming from the tear duct. Yeah. But it's like, oh, you got yourself a real tear there, mate. That's what accolades are made of. <laughs> oh, that was great. And um I, I love because you know, the whole premise here is that like the Steve Coogan's director is just rubbish at his job like he's completely out of his depth mm. and so he's summoned to a crisis meeting with tom cruise or len grossman should i say yeah. and i love how it's like a video conference and like len grossman's just like looking around the where, room where like, is he where where's is the key grip guy because that's the where? guy who has to hold the big boom mic so yes. they're always like big and muscular uh and he's like you hit that guy really <laughs> fucking hard <laughs> in the face yeah he's like what <laughs> Sorry, sorry, mate. <laughs> fucking whacks him. Ah! Nose, blood everywhere on his nose. Yeah. Oh, I can't control great. them. They're all prima donnas. Yeah. You, 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 what you do? You get them, you pull the pants down, you fucking spank them. You spank them. <laughs> well, I love then when it's um, Nick Nolte's character, who, like, he's meant to be the guy that this is all based on. You know, yeah. he's got the fucking hooks for hands and stuff, and he's, like, in full-on badass routine. And he's like, I know a place you can take a man. And he'll strip him down to the bone. <laughs> you know, and he, he wants to take them out into the jungle and stuff. And, like, I love how Tom Cruise just looks at him, and he's like, who the fuck are you? He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. this is the guy that, you know, wrote the book. He's like, <laughs> you're, you're an American hero, and your country <laughs> owes you a debt. Now shut the fuck up and let me do my job! <laughs> He spits the apple up. Yeah. <laughs> oh man! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> those are. I mean, those are. Tom, Tom Cruise was just great. I mean, he was great when he was used again sparingly, and that's what made it so. Uh, you know, that's what that's what made it stick so much. Because uh, when he came on, I mean, he dominated every scene he was in. Yeah, oh, every man. scene he was in. Because um, he's such a fascinating character, just the way he looks and the way he acts, like <laughs> you know. When he, uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I won't be surprised if that was Weinstein. 
I had a thought there, just how fat and hairy and stuff that he is. Uh, again, how how he screams at people constantly. I was like, yeah, I I'll rip your surprised. fucking tits off. <laughs> if you don't do this, I will rip your tits off. <laughs> yeah, I just love how um, when the, the I guess they're Viet Cong or something like the drug lords that uh, capture Ben Stiller. They're trying mm. to hold him for ransom, and he misunderstands it and thinks they're like some rival studio or something. Yeah. And he's just screaming at them like, "I will go thermal nuclear on your ass." Yeah. We are dragon. <laughs> and then when he when he gets, but when he gets off the phone to them, like having screamed at them and told them he's going to murder them and destroy them, then he just goes to his assistant and says, "Like, can you find out who those people are, please?" Yeah, yeah. Can you find out who they are, please? He has no fucking clue. That's gonna come back and actually they're a drug cartel. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then he still doesn't waver. He's when they call back. We don't have our fifty million. We want a hundred million dollars now. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and he finishes the call by just going, We do not we negotiate do not with terrorists. <laughs> and everyone's just like <laughs> <laughs> Then we get the, that that leads into the beep. <laughs> he gets into the you got to make a decision to his agent. Yeah, and he's, yeah, yeah. and he's doing the whole dancing. Yeah. <laughs> player, player, player. <laughs> Has he not got like a big giant money medallion? Oh, he's got he yeah, he's got a gold, gold, gold dollar, gold, gold dollar thing. Player. A G5 Gulfstream. <laughs> yeah, G5, yeah G, G5 private jet and a lot of money. I just, uh, like, because obviously, like, his, his mind just goes straight to, well, if they kill this guy, you, then we can collect the insurance money and it's going to write up the losses of this film. And so he's given this big, like, compassionate speech to Matthew McConaughey, his agent. Where he's like, yeah, we're we're going to mourn him publicly. He'll have died like a hero. No, no, see, we're going to mourn him in the press. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's <laughs> like, <laughs> he goes, and later, I mean, way, way down the line, <laughs> we'll file an insurance claim. <laughs> Preferably before the end of the fiscal year. <laughs> you just know that's how these studios totally work, though. Yeah. It's wonderful. Just, just absolute heartless scum. Uh, but it's just so funny, though. It's just so, so fucking funny. Oh, God. Like, there's just, there's, yeah, there's so many scenes in this movie. Um, like, when he gets on the phone to him, it's just like, I want you to take two steps back and go fuck your face! <laughs> <laughs> he's just raging all the time. Like, he's fucking always yelling at someone. I was just, I was, I'm literally crying with laughter at this scene. <laughs> just absolutely crying with fucking laughter, man. <laughs> just take two steps back. Oh, fuck him. <laughs> okay. Ah, man. I know we're kind of jumping a bit all over the place, but like, it's just that kind of film, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, bits yeah, that yeah. come to mind. You uh, remember a bit, you go to a bit. Yeah. Go 100%. back to a bit. Yeah, I love, uh, because you know, <laughs> when they did the gay scene with with Al, Al Pacino, the whole Lance thing, and of course at that time Jack Black's tied to the tree because he's going through drug withdrawals because he's <laughs> oh, had shit, his drugs nicked, and then he's just like, "I will suck your cock right now if you free me." <laughs> it's like I'll cut the I'll cut the balls. I'll work the shaft. I told you I'm not gay. Yeah, I told you I'm not gay. I'll cut I'll cut the balls. I'll work the shaft. Bring it over here, boy. Let's do this. Yeah, I'll swallow the gravy. <laughs> just absolutely inappropriate. Just so inappropriately funny. And uh, it's because it's so generalized. There's no, not specifically targeting anyone. It, it's, there's a lot of generalized humor in it, and it's laid at everyone. You know, it's, it's laid at every single solid. You know, there's uh, the, the studio system. The way that that's run, the actors, black actors, white actors, uh, drugs, uh, sexuality. Um, <laughs> he even throws a kid off a fucking bridge at one point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's just, 
it's not it's not offensive because it's not specifically aimed at anyone. It's just like, look, we're just we're taking generalizations, we're taking general targets, and we're just mocking everything. Yeah, that's absolutely what it does. <laughs> and because of that, you know, it it never comes across as mean spirited or no. you know, unpleasant or anything like that. It's just having a laugh at everyone and it's not taking itself too seriously. And God, I so miss that about movies. You just don't get it nowadays. And no. yeah, there's so many comments in, in chat here where people say, yep, that's a film you would never get today. You would never be able to make this film today. And you definitely wouldn't. True. You absolutely would not make, make this film today. Somebody said, yeah. Az likes to hear himself talk in the chat. And I'm like, I'm on a podcast with two <laughs> fucking people. We, we, there's there's only my Az and me. Like, <laughs> yes. that's, that's it. Like, either he talks or I talk. Like, that's it. <laughs> I'll like, drink, I'll be back in 20, all right? Just, just, yeah, I'll just, just text me on my phone, all right? Myself. Just jump us a text, mate, and I'll, yeah, I'll tell you, yeah. your turn, your turn now. <laughs> yeah, it's talking time for, for the drinker. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I love the whole segment where um, where Tug gets captured by, like, these villagers, like, in, in Vietnam, and uh, they discover that he's the guy who played Simple Jack, and, like, that. <laughs> that's, like makes them a god amongst them because like that's the only v the only vhs tape that they've got and it's just yeah but that. they still hate him as well <laughs> yeah well they hate him but like they they worship simple jack so like he's the guy who can portray him for them and so <laughs> <laughs> they want to get to do it and he put the teeth in from the old man is that my papa <laughs> just hits him yeah. be sillier be sillier <laughs> 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 it hurt. My dad made my brain hurt. <laughs> oh man! Uh, yeah, but when he when they get the, when they get it out, it's on VHS. He's like, oh, you got it on VHS. Yeah, because because they, they're always talking about DVDs earlier. It's because you know it's the DVD movement, the Blu-ray movement, DVDs, DVD. Oh, you got it, you got it on VHS. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love how accurate it is as well when they were saying like it. Between DVDs and HD DVDs, it's kind of the porn industry that decides which one's going to succeed. Uh, yeah. And then he, he kind of mentions offhand, well, the PS3 also had a Blu-ray player built into it, so that was like a huge boost to it. And it really fucking was. <laughs> yes. That was the yeah. thing. Because the, yeah, this Who are you talking basic. to? Yeah. Shit, you're man, you're talking to me this whole time. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking to anyone who's really listening. For fuck, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Because he's really into Phil, you know, he's really into his craft. Yeah. He's really but he's into the, you know, the kind of te technology side of it as well and, and the um the, the behind the scenes and, and what made you know what kind of pushes or drives the technology of the film industry. Yeah, and it is the porn industry and it's gaming and it, you know, so it was quite it was quite interesting to have those segments put into the film just for the just for the character actor to absolutely shit all over them. It's yeah. all about him. <laughs> yeah, I just I love when he's taking the piss out of Ben's store because he twigs really early on that like this isn't like the the movie that they think it is. He knows that it's it's real because when um the director just steps on a landmine and blows up, like Ben Stiller's <laughs> yeah. all pretending like, "Oh, you know, it's just corn syrup and special effects." It's like, "No, that dude's really dead." You know, there's his fucking head lying on the ground over there. Just look Sticking his fingers into it. it's just corn syrup. Yeah. That tastes like warm blood. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, I was just like, ah! Ah! And then he's just like dangling the head and going, ah! With his neck. Well, yeah, because he like puts his bayonet, bayonet up, up inside the neck and like a bunch of like, you know, entrails <laughs> or whatever falls out of it. Yeah. <laughs> these these and you see, people do you not see the. <laughs> you see Kevin in the background just going like, oh. yeah, <laughs> just dry even. <laughs> he ain't coming back. <laughs> yeah. Do you know where you even are? Yes, I know where I am. Where are you? Enter scene. <laughs> He's just like reading from the notes that director's given him. Yeah, I go, I go into the jungle on my own. <laughs> just like, oh no, this guy's got no idea where he's going, what he's doing. Yeah, because like, um, Kurt's ranting at him like, yeah, my man here thinks he's a one man GPS. 
you know, like, <laughs> like picking them off in a random direction. He's got no idea where he's going. <laughs> God. But it's it, it's a film that doesn't overstay its welcome. It's what an hour thirty seven minutes or something. No, I think it's a bit longer than that. I think it's around the two hour mark. Really? I could, wait, hold on. I'll... It's like the it feels so quick. Maybe because it's just so fun. Oh no! So it's one hundred and seven minutes. Yeah. So it's one hundred uh, one forty seven. One forty seven, not thirty seven. Yeah. No, it's uh, one oh seven. So. Um... Yeah, getting close to the two hour mark, but not yeah. not over long. So yeah. Doesn't That's overstay. Perfect. Long. Yeah. Yeah. For a film like this, you wouldn't want it to be longer than that. Um and you know, it works in all the gags that it needs. It gives you a nice neat character arc for each of the, the big actors. You know, they've all got things that they're wrestling with and they all kind of overcome it by the end of it, you know. Um mm. Al Pacino comes out as gay and, and you see him with his boyfriend at the end. Yeah. You know, Ben Stiller learns to cry and wins an Oscar. Jack Black <laughs> gets off the drugs. Kurt Lazarus, like, uh, you know, finds himself and he finds himself, yeah. To hide behind other characters anymore. So yeah, so it's like it... No, because we have the Oscar we have the Oscar bit and they're all there, you know, getting their little their little uh snippets at the end. And then Tom Cruise is just like to his right hand man. He's just like, I, I wouldn't have been able to do, do this without you. And he just pats him on the shoulder. He's like, I think, do, do you mean that? It's just like, of course I don't. A fucking nut monkey could do your fucking job. Yeah. <laughs> a nutless monkey. A yeah. nutless monkey could do your job. <laughs> now go yeah, after then- the parties and take play- take credit for everything that's going on here. But then he has the hammer at home again. And he's like, "But seriously, a nutless yeah. monkey could do yeah, your job." Just as he's about to leave, just grabs him. Seriously, <laughs> nutless monkey could do your job. But yeah, like Tom Cruise, then just uh, you know dims the lights and he heads out into the dance floor and just does his incredible fucking dance. <laughs> into the, cred- <laughs> and the credits of the movie. It's just apparently Tom Cruise wanted to do that. Like that was his idea. Really. Um, God bless the man. Like that's just beautiful. He probably after the first little taste when he does that that little bit with uh, Matthew McConaughey, hmm. then he probably thought to himself, pe- you know, people probably pissed themselves at that, and he's like, yeah, okay, this could be this could be a little a little thing here. <clears throat> do you think he choreograph he got it choreographed, or do you think he just went for it? I kind of I hope he went for it. I hope this was all just ad libbed. Uh, which would just make him even more of a legend. I got the feeling it might have been choreographed, though. Because, mm. you know, you're talking about, like, a, a guy in his late 40s, probably by that point, is, like, maybe not going to be too down with the kids <laughs> these days. Might need a little bit of help with the choreography. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, you know, who knows what goes on behind those Scientology walls, you know? Who knows, yeah. Like, I... You know what? If if Scientology is the worst of of Tom Cruise's life compared to the rest of Hollywood, that's all right with me, man. Honestly, <laughs> uh, I'm fine with that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just like his 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 scenes were great. Like he he really you know made the movie in a lot of ways. Um, I love as well with Matthew McConaughey how his like his whole thing as Tom as Ben Stiller's agent is that like he just obsesses over TiVo like yeah. this, this obscure clause <laughs> in his contract like that's the thing that he's going to focus on um, and again I think that's probably based on experience with other agents who are just desperate to seem like they're doing something worthwhile and so they'll just focus on some shitty part of the contract that doesn't matter and just like try and get more out of it or whatever <clears throat> but he's got his little I mean he's when uh, Ben Stiller goes off on his own and he's in a jungle and they're all having their little you know they're all playing they're playing the awesome Sympathy for the Devil by uh, Rolling Stones of course and uh, he's there in his little self-made heart which is just taking pages from his mag- from magazine and <laughs> just put them over like a shell of bamboo and he's watching Star Trek, the original series. Yeah, yeah Kirk fighting the Gorn. Yeah, and then, then the, <laughs> the little panda bear comes out with a bush and he's just stabbing, stabbing this bear. And of course, he's on the back of Van- is it Vanity Fair or something. Yeah, with the panda. Where he's just like, the, pa- the, the fate of the, the panda isn't 
as black and white as you may think. Well, that, and then that he ends scene... up wearing the fucking panda. Yeah. That scene was clearly like stolen from Predator. You know the bit where Mac gets attacked in the middle of the night by like a, a beast or something. A boar? Is it a boar or something? A boar, yeah. He thinks yeah. it's the Predator, and so he's knifing this fucking thing. And then, yeah, it's like Jesus, you killed a pig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just wearing the fucking skin of it. Like, and I don't yeah. know what he's eating, but they're clearly some sort of like hallucinogen or something because he's yeah. tripping balls <laughs> when they creep up behind and, and, and capture him. But he's there with his fucking panda head and he's put one big panda eye on himself and yeah, uh, just totally lost it after what? Less than a day in <laughs> less than a day in the forest. Yeah. Again, probably a commentary on actors and how like they're just absolute pussies and like they can't actually stand any real hardship, um, and it just causes them to go off the rails. You know, it's um, <laughs> it's just great stuff. It's just Hollywood actually being able to make fun of itself and have a laugh, and mm. you just don't get it. You don't get it anymore. Was it? Where was it actually filmed? Did they? Where did they film it? Uh, hold on. I'll see if I can tell you. This is what it's going to be there. It ends up being filmed in um, Vancouver. It was it kinda... Hawaii. Apparently. Oh, it's Hawaii. Right? Okay. Which kind of, you kind of get because there's bits where they're walking through the jungle, but there's like giant cliffs off in the background. It's like that really reminds me of the, the background for Lost. And it's like, yeah, both, both things were filmed in Hawaii, basically. Aha. So, but yeah, you've got the you've got the tropical kind of jungle and stuff. So, yeah, much all you need really. Because like this really looks like it has been filmed on location somewhere. Yeah, you know, relatively, <clears throat> relatively close to to what they're uh, trying to uh, to mimic, which is uh, Vietnam. I don't think you would want to film in actual Vietnam anymore. No, especially when you're dropping four million dollar explosions. <laughs> That was another thing. Right at the beginning where they waste they waste the $4 million explosion, which causes Len Grossman to, to go after the director. And it has that uh, sort of Hollywood reporter talking about, you know, how the film's uh, in jeopardy. And it's just like, after less than a week of filming, the film is said to be a month behind schedule. Yeah. <laughs> like, There's five days of filming, they're a month behind. <laughs> what? <laughs> how did we even get to that how did we even get to that it was just, it was just <laughs> I wonder if I wonder if uh, what's he called um, oh god Ben Stiller's one it's uh, du, 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 Tug I wonder if Tug Speedman's career can get boop, 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 back on track <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just full on taking the piss out of him. <laughs> and when he's in his um when he's there, of course, they, they're all behind the scenes in these these luxury villas. Mm. Uh and, and just being pampered. He's got the huge swimming pool there, mm. he's got the masseuse there, he's walking around with the guy's fucking hooks on his arms and yeah, uh, oh, he's trying he's to be all f- yeah, because he's trying to be all method. Method, yeah. <laughs> he's just trying to eat with the hooks on and walking <laughs> around, and it's a sarong and everything. Which could yeah. be a could be a David Beckham stab again because they do say he does kick the head uh, of the director when he's blown blown off, and he just says, "Look at me, I'm Dave Beckham." <laughs> yeah, I suppose that was back in the time when David Beckham was still relevant as a, a footballer and stuff. Yeah, and he was friends with him. He he had actually become friends with um, Ben Stiller and such. Yeah. So uh, yeah, they might have they might have been um, trying to keep you know a little bit of relevancy because I think there was talk of trying to get Beckham into uh, films because he was a remember big Tom Cruise uh, friend as well. Tom Cruise befriended him and yeah. Ben Stiller and such. I mean, David Beckham's great. Like until he opens his mouth and starts talking, and that's when it. That's when it all starts to go a bit wrong. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. Great look, you know. He's a handsome guy, great hair, you know, keeps himself in great nick. But then he opens his mouth. It's David Beckham, isn't it? Like, 
<laughs> it doesn't it doesn't quite work. It's like was it when Arnold came over and, and did uh Hercules is it Hercules in New York or something? Yeah. And the, and because his Austrian accent was so thick, they just dubbed him over with an American yeah. guy. I am Hercules <laughs> in New York. <laughs> it's just no, that's what they should do with Beckham. Yeah, they, they really should. Just get some guy with a gravelly deep voice. Mm. And, and he can voice Beckham because yeah, you get that, you got the total package. Um I just don't know what he could do. Like, could you imagine David Beckham doing action movies or something? I don't know. No. Man. <laughs> it's like, but he already, he already smoked. I think Beckham already smokes anyway. I don't know if he's given up, but he used to smoke. I was like, look, you know, that that fucks your voice up. That's what you need. Maybe go to two packs a day. Packs yeah, a day. yeah, yeah. You you need a lifetime of booze and out and um, and cigarettes, and then that'll get you yeah. on the right track. It's just then you'll look like shit. So well, that's mm. a double edged sword, really, isn't it? God bless <clears> you, Dave. God bless you. What is he doing nowadays? I haven't heard head and the tail up from Beckham for years. He's putting up with his wife. <laughs> I think. Trying to tease an interesting conversation out of. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is going to take a few decades to. I mean, uh, to they, work they on. do. Like God bless them. Like they, they look fantastic, but they just come across as like the two of them, the most dull, dumb as fuck people that you could meet. You know, what what do they have to talk about? Well, I mean, I don't know about David. I mean, maybe he could be a bit of a laugh. Um he did fuck his nanny after all, didn't he? Yeah, that's true. You know, when uh, he went but uh he got he got pulled back into um he got pulled back into check pretty quick. But he, he, they married so young, you know, in the in the when uh, Britpop was at its height. Beckham was uh, an absolute megastar. Spice Girls were megastars. So he's never really had too much time to 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 massively cut loose as a. I mean, I res- you know respect to the guy for staying with her all this time. I know he hasn't stayed entirely faithful, but they're still <laughs> together after like two decades and that's pretty fucking impressive for the kind of life that they live and the world that they are part of Mm. Uh, even if it might be i don't know i mean it could be just a marriage of convenience or who knows who knows but or they might 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 have reconciled and just been like you know did a couple of silly things did a couple of silly things darling yeah i've got it it out my system though i've got it it out my system it didn't quite work for arnold did it no, no, not so much. And you think, um, like, you know, Jesus Christ, you're Arnold Schwarzenegger. You can do better than that nanny that you were maybe, begging. Maybe, maybe just, you know, the uh, the Kennedy the Kennedy woman <laughs> was just so bad in bed. Yeah. Maria Shriver, yeah, Maria yeah. Shriver. She's got she's part of the Kennedy family, isn't she? She is. Yeah, um, she's part of the Kennedy clan. I love yeah. this this comment actually. <clears throat> um, Living's flame about Victoria Beckham says she's like a bag of elbows. <laughs> <laughs> she really fucking is. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. Like, it'd be like it'd be like dating a skeleton. I don't know, man. Not my cup of Java. Skeleton, like a little bit skin here. on skin on the bone of a woman, you know. Yeah, give me Haley Atwell any day of the week. I tell you. Well, Marvel didn't. <laughs> yeah, I've heard about that. <laughs> they gave you uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's what they gave you instead. With Haley Atwell's head stapled on top. Yeah, just literally stapled. <laughs> yeah, stapled I, on. I mean, I haven't watched that um, that What If cartoon thingy, um, so I've no idea if it's any good or what. But like the the artwork for it just seemed a bit preposterous. I don't know, man. Yeah, it's not. It's not great. It's like there's some these there's some good moments here and there, but it just can't help itself. It's current day, it's 2021, it can't help itself. It's got a stuck in its uh Oh, it's at last a woman has a voice to be heard. I no longer am in a room and feel like I'm being ignored and all that kind of all that's all over the place. You can't be Captain America, you're a dame. What's a woman yeah. doing in this place that would it's all over it's all over the all over the thing, so is, like, it, uh, is it Haley Atwell that voices her? Yes, it's um, it's the whole cast apart from Chris Evans. 
Oh, like wow, it's cool. Sebastian Stan that does um, Bucky and, uh, uh, you know, uh, the other cast members from um, the first Captain America, the first Avenger. Uh, reprise, you know, Stanley Tucci. Uh, Tucci? Stanley Tucci. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, doing, you know, reprising his voice as well. They, they cut off Tommy Lee Jones' though. character in it straight away, so I, don't, so I don't think Tommy Lee Jones was in it. Right, okay. Uh, yeah. b- because they change a couple of things that that happen, obviously to change the the events. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's causing a nice brouhaha in the internet. Of course, you know, people going, "Well, what's wrong with having a woman with a man's body?" <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't pretend to know the the ins and outs of like the serum that they take and stuff. My assumption was that it kind of like it enhances you to the 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 peak of your potential. Yes, it enhances uh, so, your you based off you. Yeah, so that's why Steve turns <clears throat> into this like you know big Hulk and um, virtuous um, hero because that's who he is deep down. Whereas someone like the Red Skull turns into a hideous, deformed monster because again, mm-hmm. that's who he is. Um, and so you don't know what it's going to do to someone like Peggy Carter. You know, no, she's, I she's it, virtuous. She's um, she's yeah, I loyal. assume like she's a good person and stuff, so it would have a positive effect on her somehow. But she might come out just being a a, a you know a real lean, mean fighting machine. Very, um, very possibly, yeah. But she came out with no tits <laughs> and a man's body. <laughs> I know, and like you know, you're you're minimizing the best aspect of her, man. Come on, no, Haley, that was like tiny and fucking busty, you know. Yeah. Curvy, <laughs> tiny and curvy. She's like perfect. It's just like yeah. brilliant. That's a, uh, that's, a, that's a real one. And this, tell you what, this is actually this is quite a weird thing. There is this just like no women in this film. Really? Oh, that, that's no, but, I mean, point, there's, just, there's, there's no there's no main woman. There's there isn't a uh, a woman in this film in, in <laughs> any of the lead roles. None. That's because that's because they're not funny ass. <laughs> <laughs> Chrissy, <laughs> if you're watching, I apologize on uh, Drinker's behalf. <laughs> nah, Chrissy, you're the exception, man. You genuinely need to laugh. That, no, that, blowing, up, that blowing up a plane thing was fucking brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Bishop Kayeli! <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it's weird, because it, you don't really notice either. I didn't, I didn't really notice until the end, and I was just like, oh, wait. Yeah. Didn't, you know, there wasn't even like a token woman to to uh to pick up her own. No, this is just a complete man's man sort of movie. Um yeah. not it, saying it, it's just there for men to enjoy, but No, no, you're you're hundred percent right. And you know, it's weird because like it's not something I even <laughs> thought about when I was watching it. I was just enjoying the movie. Mm. Um but yeah, like it 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 I guess it just wouldn't have worked. You know, if you tried to put a woman into into part of the squad or something like that, uh, I just don't see it how it could have worked. Um, you you could almost have fun with it nowadays, right? If you did this, but it's like they race or sorry, they gender swapped all the characters, and so you've got like a squad of Vietnam soldiers who are all played by women, and they, you know. They're like, yeah, I don't even know why the fuck I'm here. Like, I just took this role because it seemed like a great opportunity, but like, it's total bullshit or something like that. You could actually like make a movie almost about that, like how how ludicrous <clears throat> the modern trend is for for race or for gender swapping characters like that. Yeah, I think I think you're putting something together here. Something, uh, or even if it's like just a couple of characters, the main character like Four Leaf in this would be gender swapped to to a woman. But wouldn't it be crazy if, like, she turned out to actually be a really likable character beneath that? You know, she was like, yeah, I'm just doing this because it was a great opportunity to advance my career. Yeah, my publisher told me to do this, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, yeah, but it's like, I don't actually want to be doing it, but, like, this this is where I'm at. Um, These, Yeah, these are the only roles I get offered. I just get offered, you know, uh, gender change. Yeah, I get to be offered men. That's all I get. I just want to be a woman. I just... You know, I want a I want a movie where I, you know, where I where I romance or meet a guy and you know, da 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 da. But no, everything I get, 
look, I've even got fucking Superman. They could have like a fucking Superman script. But this is the thing, like you, you wouldn't be able to do that again because like it would mean Hollywood reevaluating the, the, the nonsense that they try to pull um and making fun of themselves and you couldn't do that. And so you know, kind of a, a good idea with some potential there that we just would never be allowed to get made. And it's it's a shame. Again, because it's a chance for them to say, Yeah, you know, we do some dumb stuff occasionally, but here's how it can actually work. Or something well, like that, you know? An independent could do it. An independent, an independent could do it. I mean, main studios, no chance because it's all done by committee, and it's you got to hit the uh, the right demographic here, there, and and that. So you could even take an idea like that to the studio and then go, "Oh, this is fantastic! We're just going to make a few tweaks with the script, though." Okay, so um, the the woman we actually prefer a woman of color uh, yeah. in this, in, you know, and and the, the kind of and then by time. That had all been resolved, then you've just got yourself a typical, a typical modern day Hollywood uh, film script anyway. So it wouldn't even be funny anymore. Yeah, yeah. And this this movie kind of came along at that that time before all of this nonsense. You know, when you were still able to make just funny movies that weren't concerned about being politically correct or anything like that. Um, and it just, I got this real wave of nostalgia. When I was watching it, like even when like Kevin was talking about the PlayStation Three and how it, it plays Blu-rays and stuff, like uh, I was like, man, I'm I'm back in like the late two thousands again. It just yeah, when life was normal, yeah, like when people weren't insane and like social media wasn't <laughs> everywhere and like everyone wasn't angry about everything all the time and like movies like this were allowed to exist and yeah, were Bush, allowed to Bush just, just a moron. Bloody yeah, Bush. oh moron. Yeah. And that was uh, fine, you know. <laughs> but yeah, but but you know, two thousand eight. That's when Iron Man came out. Uh, that's when Robert. This is a this is the renaissance of Robert Downey Jr. This is his uh, return to uh, superstardom. Yeah. Uh, after after being literally one throw away from prison life for a long time. Yeah. Uh, and- crazy times. But what's great? I think he's never disowned this movie. Like he's always no. stood by it, and he's always said, "Nope, I, uh, you know, this is the reasons why I did this and why I agreed to it, uh, and this is what I was trying to show." And like, I'm not going to apologize for it. And God, I just hope he doesn't cave and disown this movie because it's it's so important that stuff like this still is allowed to exist. Well, he recently uh, defended Chris Pratt, so I don't I don't think the guy is losing that. Um, aspect of himself anytime soon. Yeah. Um, because uh, when everyone different. was going after him, he was just like, no, Chris Pratt's a really good guy. Leave him alone. Crazy fucks. <laughs> you yeah. Know? And he, did, and he yeah. did it right. He, 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 he did the right thing. He came to the defense of a, a work colleague of his uh, who he clearly liked, who was, he, you know, when he was saying Chris is, you know, a really good guy. Uh, and this is completely unfair. This this treatment that he's getting and stuff. So yeah, it's just nice to actually hear somebody from Hollywood with a backbone to speak up for their friends. Yeah, uh, yeah, I got a lot of respect for Chris Pratt. Actually, you know, um, he seems like a chill guy. He seems like the kind of guy you would happily go out for a few beers with and just have a great old night. Oh yeah, you know, and pretty down to earth and. Yeah, I did. <clears throat> Look, when I was uh, when I did a review of like the Tomorrow War, I actually quite enjoyed that movie. I mean, it was dumb and it had loads of like you know inconsistencies in it and stuff, but it was just meant to be a dumb action movie, and it was fine with that, you know. And I think he was really good in it. Yeah, the the film. I mean, the film had terrible flaws in terms of the plot, mm-hmm. um, but I mean, he was fine. He was fine in it. It uh, it was nice to actually have a f- film centered around somebody actually caring for their family as opposed to disowning their family. Uh, yeah. It was nice to have a father-son arc for a change because they seem to be running desperately out of fashion as well. Oh, yeah. Um, but I could... I mean, I could see somebody like Chris Pratt. It'd be perfect casting to be in a in a Tropic Thunder-esque uh, movie. I think he, he, would, he would fit in with that cast absolutely uh, perfectly. Definitely, 
Definitely. Man, we need to get another Tropic Thunder type film made. You hear us, Hollywood? Get it yeah, done. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't... <sighs> Is there a film that's even close to Tropic Thunder in terms of the way that it tackles race, re retard, disability? Um, you know, those those type of... Uh, the, the ego of Hollywood the ego of the actor there's just i don't in, in one in just one movie i don't think there's a, another film which comes anywhere close to doing the same lampooning of of hollywood not um not since this film has been made no um the only one that, that came kind of or that touched upon some of this stuff was argo for me and it's not it's absolutely not a comedy but it, it talks about a lot of the like the wasted like shit behind the scenes in Hollywood, like how many people are just there for a free ride and like how movies are actually put together and how easy it is to fake one. Um, like, like it's a fantastic film in its own right, but it, it gives you kind of an insight into how like Hollywood productions are actually done and how many people that are involved are just totally pointless. Um, Some people in the chat are saying extras, Ricky Gervais is extras is pretty, yeah, that's pretty, pretty good. I mean, Ricky Gervais doesn't hold back. No. I would say the nearest we've had since, though, since uh, Tropic Thunder would probably be episodes with Matt LeBlanc. Right. If you've seen that. I um, have not. No. Matt LeBlanc plays a version of Matt LeBlanc. <laughs> right, okay. Which isn't really, you know, who he is, but uh, he plays him himself in, in Extras. And it's about the studio system and and how uh, they they take a show, they take like a British show, and they want to to have it for an American audience. <laughs> and it's just completely. By the time it hits America, it's perverted beyond recognition. Kind of like um, Red Dwarf, then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Well, exactly like the Red Dwarf pilot went for America. Yeah. Um, and and that's actually a pretty. That's a really funny show, actually. But it's, you know, it's kind of sanitized. It's still a little bit sanitized to what we get, what we get in something like Tropic Thunder. Yeah, so a lot of people have referenced Team America, which is it's the same level of humor. It's just, um, you know, the context is different. It's not so much about Lampoon and Hollywood. It's about you know other stuff. Um, but yeah, like another really funny movie that I, it just wouldn't be allowed today. It would never get made today. Tropic Thunder wouldn't know, not a hope in hell of getting made today. There's Black a great face? one here. You think you could do blackface now? No. No. Uh, Chad Thompson here said uh, Joe Biden is Simple Jack. <laughs> Joe Biden is Simple Jack. <laughs> yeah. He's Dementia Jack. That's what he you is. He's Dementia Jack. Make me ha happy. And <laughs> <laughs> just have Kamala. Uh, not Kamala, whatever. Not Kamala. Calm, 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 Kamala, Kamala, Kamala Harris, Kamala, 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 Kamala yeah. Bear. Yeah, just have her doing one of her psycho uh, smiles. Commander in chief in waiting. Um, <laughs> yeah. Give it a year, man. Give it a year. Oh, Should I know, I know. <laughs> Sleepy Joe's on his way out. Uh, Fear of Emma said that Hot Shots Part Due, uh, another fantastic movie that was made back in '93, I think, or '92. Like that Jeez. was early '90s. Yeah, but it's so good. Hot Shots Part Due. Uh, I love, I love both the Hot Shots movies, but I actually think I love two more than one. I do, I do. Yeah, it's just <laughs> we should do that sometime. Actually, because <laughs> it's that is that is a ridiculous God. film. Um, but Zucker Brothers, that was Zucker uh, Zucker's as well, wasn't it? Zucker Brothers. Did hot it was, yeah. Like the guys who did airplane, wasn't it? Yeah. And and uh Sucker Brothers were geez, man, they oh, fuck airplane, top secret, hot shots. They they were going through a police squad, of course. They did police squad before any of that. Yeah, Naked they gun. Had, they had an absolute run of absolute classics. Yeah, they were they were superb. Spaceballs is uh of course uh, Mel um Brooks. Mel Brooks, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that was a, just an amazing one, absolutely amazing one. 
Uh, but yeah, there's there's some great films, but I don't think there's a film that just comes close to absolutely just tearing the uh, the Hollywood system apart like um, like Tropic Thunder does. Yeah, oh, it's just it's glorious. It's it's completely irreverent. It doesn't give a shit, and it's just it's all the better for it. You know, um, amen. So, I was going to say we do have a few super chats here. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Time to go through them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just give me one second. <laughs> I just, it's just the set pieces in this movie, man. The what? Sorry. They're just the set pieces in this movie, for goodness sake. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this was written by, uh, I think one of the writers of this was, because uh, Ben Stiller always gets involved. But I think one of them was Justin Theroux, who, who um, is, I think, Louis Theroux's cousin, by the way. He is, yeah, he and, is. And uh, he was uh, in Leftovers. Um. But he then went on to do the screenplay after this for guess what? For Iron Man Two. Really? Yeah. Because I was watching a vignette the other day um, about Iron Man, the Iron Man series, and uh, Justin Thoreau just popped up, and he was the screenwriter of Iron Man Two. So Damn. he, uh, yeah, he went with Downey. So da so there's this link, you know, from from Iron Man. Uh, to to Tropic Thunder, and then from Tropic Thunder into Iron Man Two. Jeez, there you go. Yeah, that that is the connection. Um, yeah, bear with me one second, because I'm uh, normally I can bring up my super chats like the previous ones that came up, but it's it's playing hardball with me tonight, and it's not loading the the screen, so I'm just gonna. Oh, have you had it. the? Uh, you got the glitch now. <clears throat> I've got the glitch, yeah. So I'm going to try it through Microsoft Edge of all things and see if that wow. works. Wow, yeah. There is a glitch with uh, YouTube at the moment. Ever since they put um, a dark theme at the back end, it seems to have fucked a few things up. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, that's exactly what I want. Yeah. Uh, right. Okay. So I will log in a different way, and we'll just see what happens this way. Just talk amongst yourselves for a second. I'll just try and. He is, says somebody. What's that yeah. say? Justin Threw has been friends with uh, Miller, uh, with uh, Ben Stiller for years, apparently. Ah, okay. Uh, so that's uh, that's a good. Somebody, somebody said, "Is the, are you in the metaverse?" Yes. Jumping between streams. <laughs> I think Justin Threw was also involved in the writing of Zoolander, which is another Ben Stiller uh, ah. project. Uh, Justin Threw also did the whole BLM thing where he apologized for making certain movies. No way. No way. Including this one? <clears throat> ah, it'd be interesting to look into that one. Iron Man 3 was good. I watched it recently. I, I thought it was great, and I didn't like it the first time that I watched it. And then I watched it again, and it maybe because things have got so bad, it, it was like, oh no, this is how a movie should be. Um, <clears throat> what do you mean? <laughs> that was a great line. Somebody said in chat, What do you mean, you people? Yeah. Where Ben says, You what people, what do you mean, you people? Yeah, then, yeah Al Pacino's just like, What do you mean, you people? What do you mean, you people? <laughs> but he was so deeply entrenched, he didn't even look around to Al Pacino because he was still taking offense for the you people. Yeah. That's how that's how deep that's how deep he goes into his uh oh, the, Yeah, the bit where he um where he yeah, where he embraces him and he's just like for four hundred years that word's been keeping our people down. Yeah. Four hundred years. <laughs> oh man, you see the only and that's it, that was the only M word dropped in the whole show. It was, in, yeah. In the whole film. That's the, that's all you needed, though. That was really exactly. all you needed. Exactly. Exactly. It was poignant and it was perfect. Uh, A lot of people didn't understand Tropic Thunder's humor. 
I, I, I mean, look, I, I'm not trying to um, ruffle any feathers. I don't think Tropic Thunder is a difficult film to understand the humor of. I, th you know, I think it's perfectly clear that this is 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 uh, lampooning the studio system and and actors. I don't see how regular people could potentially take offense to anything that's been going on here. Um, no. no, like we say, like when you take the context of. Um you know, what's actually being done and what they're trying to show you and what they're actually making fun of. None of it is directed against a specific group or anything like that. It's all done to make fun of Hollywood ultimately and, and yeah. their attitudes towards things. Uh, and that's what, that's the context that's so often lost when, when people just see clips from it or when they see, um, you know, yeah, it's a picture of Robert Downey Jr. doing blackface. Yes. Okay. Well, like, if you don't understand why he's doing it, then you're not going to understand the context of the film. Yeah, uh, which is such a shame. Again, because it's just it just is, it's reactionary stuff. It's reactionary stuff because you don't you don't get what the context is. Oh, well, I'm not going to watch a film where he's dressed, somebody's dressed up in black fez. This is not fair. Okay, there you go. Uh, yeah, David Zucker uh, and Jerry Zucker and Jim Abrahams, the trio, uh, they did Kentucky Fried Movie as well. Hmm. I haven't seen that in a long time. I might watch Kentucky Fried Movie tonight. I just nice. remember it being hilarious. Uh, you know this problem that you were talking about with um, the dark theme just kind of fucking things up? Is there a way yeah. you can just get around it by like switching off the dark theme uh, no the way that you can get around it is uh, by waiting approximately half an hour for youtube to fix it great yeah it, that's tends awesome. to stick, it tends to stick around for about half an hour to an hour or so i don't know if you saw on my channel the other day it said uh help my channel's under attack yeah i saw that one that's, yeah like, that's because i i got the the, the glitch yeah I, I know your video has essentially disappeared yeah, my front page, all my videos went apart from one. And if you went to my video tabs, there were no videos there at all. But if you went to my back end, ladies, yeah. uh, then they're all there. Everything was there and every I could still like upload and stuff like that. As you saw from the fact that I got out my um my video. Yeah. What I get here is like, you know, I can bring up the list of super chats. Um but it's like when you go to click on see all so you can get the full list um, of everyone that's been sent yep. in tonight. Like it just, it doesn't do anything. No. It just sits. No. Sorry. Gary got that the other day on the real BBC. Fantastic. This could be one of those situations where I have to do a catch up stream. <laughs> Eek. Um, which is rather annoying because normally I like to do the live streams right there and just uh i get them all done tonight while everyone who sent them is actually still on uh, it will be there it will be there but um unfortunately just you just can't access it just trying to think if there's another way i can get to them uh, uh just through ooh, do, 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 uh, monetization uh supers yeah yeah that's, that's the only way it's, yeah. not, it's, it's not even working for me, dude. Lovely. It's not even, it's not even working for me. So you, You've got to love Google. You really... Sorry, you've got to love YouTube. That is <laughs> Google at the end of the day, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll read any ones that come through as they go. So uh, Casey McGregor here says, Fun fact, true to his word, Robert Downey Jr. actually does the DVD commentary in character. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fucking lovely. <laughs> Yeah, why, why are you why are you still talking like this? I stay in character until I've done the DVD yeah, commentary. So. Yeah. <laughs> I just love him. I love him in this movie. He's great. He's absolutely great. Uh, Matt Storm here said, which is a fucking great name, uh, South African fan who just wants to show my appreciation for your videos, Drinker. They've got me through a difficult year. Thank you and go away now. Thank you, Matt Storm. <laughs> I see a John yeah. Gibson. I'd love yeah. to see you guys review The Player. 
another interesting look at Hollywood. Ah. There's lots of, like, really horrible, cynical <laughs> looks at Hollywood. But I don't think uh, there's any that do uh, the comedy in the way that uh, Tropic Thunder does. No. Well, it, it's a movie that doesn't leave you coming away from it with, like, a really sour taste in your mouth. Like, oh, no, I feel like I've been... I feel like I've been preached to, or I feel like I've seen something really sinister and awful. Yeah, I think, case, I think Hollywood's just, like, just put me on the casting couch and had its way with me. Yeah, I, like in this case, it's more just I've seen a bunch of incompetent assholes with like too much money and too much resources, and they've just completely squandered it. And that's how that's how a lot of movies get done these days. And I'm like, yeah, I'm cool with that. That is fine. Um. I got yeah. one from Graham Paltikin. All right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right. Here's one. Um, Jacob Babcock says Iron Man 2 was okay. Uh, great, but not bad. I actually liked Iron Man 3. I don't understand all the hate that it gets. I think for me, the, the issue was that Iron Man is basically just Tony Stark throughout most of the movie. And he doesn't really get to do any of the superhero stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's dealing. I mean, uh, I had a, a chat with, uh, I think it was uh, EFAP actually the other day about this. And um, like, they wanted to explore his PTSD in Iron Man 3. And, uh, but Shane Black kept throwing in silly jokes, which sort of, just got rid of the the levity of that uh the heavy well the heaviness of that and so it kind of made a little bit of a joke about his ptsd whereas in civil war you kind of got a much like like tony is is really sort of in his eyes trying to atone for his sins so to speak um for what's been going on but i i i liked i i wasn't i mean who the mandarin is not the not the Mandarin as in um, uh, Ben Kingsley. The Mandarin as in Guy Pierce was awful, and Guy Guy Pierce's character in that was awful. But apart from that, there's actually like Ben Kingsley was amazing as the Mandarin. <clears throat> I mean, Ben Kingsley is just you know he's capable of being really funny when he's hamming it up, kind of like what we were talking about with Tropic Thunder, where you've got. You know Tom Cruise, and you've got like Robert Downey Jr., like guys who are generally known for being serious actors. Like in a comedy role, they just mm. absolutely nail it because they've got the talent to be able to do stuff like that. Same with Ben Kingsley. Um, generally, though, like uh, you know, the Mandarin felt like a wasted opportunity to have a character that was kind of a real challenge to Tony because. Yeah, like Killian was a pretty weak antagonist. I just never really got him. He just didn't have much to him. Um, no, he was just the Riddler from Batman Forever. Yeah, and overall, it just felt like a, a Shane Black movie, you know, but not a, not a particularly good one. And I think that was the problem. It didn't feel like a an Iron Man film. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, that that was kind of my my issue with it. Um, I would I would probably take Iron Man two over Iron Man three, being perfectly honest. Um, I like it all. I uh, yeah, yeah. I just I just picked up this this week. What's that? The Iron Man, the first Iron Man. Holy ah, shit! Right. Oh, no, nice. Very that nice. Is that is a movie. That's a movie. You can see why that kicked off the, the MCU. Um, the Craig Lee Lawrence experience here said, uh, here's to my favorite two chaps on YouTube. Thank you, man. Oh, uh, dude. Nigel Milliken, drinker, I loved your Doctor Who videos, and I was wondering who is your favorite Doctor amongst the original 1 to 8 and the new 9 to 12? Uh, yeah, because 13 isn't a Doctor. <laughs> That's a fan fiction insert. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my, yeah, my favorite amongst the originals was probably Tom Baker. Um, and amongst the new ones, probably David Tennant. So he would be number 10. Yeah, that would be it for me, I think. I don't know. As do you have one? 
Uh, okay. Original series got to be Tom Baker. Um, I do love a bit of Sean Pertwee. Do love a bit of yeah. Peter Davidson. But uh, I think Tom Baker was just the quintessential. Maybe because maybe because he stuck around for I think seven years. Did Tom Baker in the role? Didn't he? Um, New Who. I gotta say Capaldi. I I think Capaldi's such a great wow. actor. Um, I think he had some god awful stuff to work with after his first season um, because the BBC were going all intersectional. Um, but he, he, I mean, he could take a bad script and elevate it. And when there was the good stuff in the bad stuff, he elevated that. Um, I think it's just such a shame the way they treated Capaldi and. and um, yeah, I'd love to see him back. I would have loved to see him back. Yeah. No, I, I, Capaldi always just felt like one of those guys, like great actor, lumbered with terrible scripts. And so yeah. it's kind of hard to know what he might have done if he'd if he had great material to work with. Like how good could he have been? You know, David Tennant, I think, benefited from just having great scripts and great, mm. you know. But Capaldi had his moments. I mean, he had his moments. He had his speeches. Um, Whitaker, Whitaker never got one. She ain't got one. It's nothing. No, <laughs> there's nothing no, that you nothing. can point to on Whitaker that that says uh, this is uh, this is you know the thirteenth Doctor. Nothing. She will be fucking forgotten in her soon. Yeah, uh, it's just you know how long do we have to wait before she actually leaves like i know like her and chipno are actually supposed to be leaving but it's like her final season is it not going to be split into two seasons they're going to do six episodes starting september starting next month Can't and wait. then there's going to be four specials n- the first being the new year's day one then they're going to do one in spring and uh, one in summer, and then one in in fall to finish. God damn! Never going to end. Uh, no, get her out. Get her out. Fucking get her quick. out. That's going to be regeneration. I'm going to want to watch because I'm going to want to make sure that she's fucking gone. Do you think she'll actually regenerate into anyone, or will it Herself. just be? Yeah, because <laughs> she's so amazing. I don't know, mate. No. I I would like. I I kind of hoping that the BBC just just don't announce a doctor and put the whole show on hiatus. Well, that's that's what I was getting at. Really, is like, do they just want to give it a break? In which case, she'll go into regeneration, but then you're not going to see who it's going to actually turn into. Yeah, just to like leave it open for a while. Um, Delanda Hunt said, uh, "Check out the movie Black Dynamite." I already have. It's a mm. fantastic film. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Black Dynamite would definitely be a, a live stream in itself because that is uh, a brilliant comedy. Love it. Black exploitation. Oh, hundred percent. But it's like parodying black exploitation yeah. movies. So yeah, it's it works really well. Um, what was the next one? Sorry, I'm just skipping up here. Jared Arab, uh, sorry, Abarka says the critical drinker is honestly the only reliable father figure I have in my life. Damn man, that's that's heavy. Uh, won't even look at the title if Dad doesn't approve. Wow. Nice. Um, thanks for recommending. Sorry, Stiebeck B says thanks for recommending Alestorm. It really speeded up pace of work on our restaurant today. Hey, uh, what do you recommend to watch or play for a weekend? Uh, well, it's got to be Drink by Illstorm. Like, uh, yeah, get Drink on. You'll love it. Uh, Bimbo Laggins says, you should try and get on uh, McCoy's Criticals podcast. I feel that would be a crossover that would rival Infinity War. Sorry, mm. Moist Criticals. Never heard of that one. Moist Critical? That's, uh, that's Charlie. Charlie. It's kind of Charlie. got a very draw. But he'd kind of be like, I woke up this morning and felt like Jesus had just come in my mouth 17 times. I then <laughs> went and sat in the toilet when an elephant shat out its... Yeah, that'd, that'd be Charlie. Okay. Uh, sounds lovely. Trent and Quinn says, still waiting for that Baywatch slow-mo beach run, y'all. We'll, we'll get it done. <laughs> we'll get it done, for sure. 
uh, past the whiskey says, have you gentlemen seen Come and See 1985, a fantastic Russian World War II film with an insane production, including live ammunition and a, and a cow killed on set? I have never seen that, I'm afraid. Um, I mean, if it's made by Russia, yeah, I, I'd imagine they're pretty fucking hardcore with that. Uh, the Outcast Creative says, Justin from Uni <laughs> Reunion with a mate from Fife. Apparently, you're now a local legend. <laughs> he wants to sponsor you. We'll pass on your details. Thank you very much. Nice. Uh, what's the next? Destino2493 says, Drinker, when are we getting the Ryan Drake movies? They're working on it. That's all I can tell you. Um, they've been held up quite a bit by the COVID stuff, and um, you just have to wait until like it's actually feasible to shoot things in Eastern Europe, because that's where they want to do a lot of it. Uh, but it is tricky right now. Uh, Claudio Rogerjan says, Les Grossman is based off Joel Silver. His process for approving scripts like Predator and Die Hard was, if they made him hard, I'm not joking. Wow. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. That seems like Joel Silver. That would be a Joel Silver thing yeah. to do. Uh, Jester of Roanoke says, Clara ruined Doctor Who for me. Keep Kept up staging the Doctor. Yeah, that, that's what they try to do with her, though. They try to make her into a fucking doctor, essentially, uh, which kind of did ro ruin a lot of the stuff. Um, the Craigley Lawrence experience says, Drinker should just play Ryan Drake in the films. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm also going to play Anya. Uh, right. Yeah, cool. I managed to catch up with those super chats that were kind of just sitting there, so I was able okay. to get that. Len Grossman uh, does look pretty much exactly like Joel Silver. <laughs> yeah. Uh, M. Blake Edwards also said, really appreciate both you guys' work. Keep it up as Blizz RIP Sir Drinker. Uh, nah, it'll be fine. Have a round on me, you two. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, yeah, Blizzard, are, I, I think they're done. I think they're absolutely done. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, it sounds like a horrible company to work for. I would not be surprised if Activision clean up, clean out, clean out shop. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Clean out it's... shop, get a bunch of new people in, and we'll see. Yeah, I think that's what you kind of have to do at this point because the whole thing is just like toxic. Um, Julian Stanley says, "Hey guys, Robert Downey Jr. was 110 percent committed to the role and stayed in character as Lazarus in the DVD commentary. Sherlock Holmes came out the same year too. Cruz also got his comeback in this film after his couch freak out on Oprah. <laughs> oh, there's, was that the same year? Fucking hell. Was that, too, was that is it, what? That was him and Katie Holmes, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he was in love with Katie Holmes. Yeah, so in love with her. Oh, um, yeah. The, the Diablo 4 games director, he's gone. Oh, damn. Another one bites the dust. Boo doo. Yeah. Dominus Another one falling. bites the dust. Fight the Club here says special appearance by just came out Lance Bass from NSYNC as Lance. Al Pacino's Oscar plus one critical drinker drunk posting. <laughs> nice. Uh, Claudio Rogajan, Moist Critical, is also known as Penguin Zo. Mm. No. Oh, okay. Um, Derpy Dosh says, Hi, Drinker. Any chance of review of the first season of Invincible eventually? I reckon you'll like it. Uh, yeah, I plan to watch it and review it, so don't worry. It's good. Uh, Stybeck B says, Are you done with Invincible, my friend? <laughs> Bam. It's all Invincible chat right now. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet, but I will. It's good. So to me, the only thing that drags it down is when it does its fucking current day sensibility shit. Uh, other okay. than that, the, the other stuff is like, the stuff is just from the comics is just fucking great. Because that yeah. wasn't doing current everyday sensibility stuff. That had to get forced in. And it feels forced. Right. Oh, I thought it was free of that sort of thing. But it's a good show. It is good, though. That's the thing. It's good. It's real good. Yeah. Um, Finkelstein Shit Kid says, Just found the critical drinker last week and realized why I love his content. He reminds me of uh, Charles Bukowski. Drinker, have you seen Whiskey Galore? Uh, yes, I have. I've seen the old one. I know the original one and really liked it. Um, it speaks to my sensibilities. Hmm. Uh, Wormy Spoon says, no, you can't have any. <laughs> no, you can't have any fucking jelly beans. <laughs> that was yeah. a great line from Jack Black. Yeah. Get, 
generally I wasn't a huge fan of him in this film. Like I found him really like one note and a bit like just a bit over the top compared to everyone else. But that was a great line from him. But I mean, he was a druggie. He was a druggie, and yeah. uh, uh, I, I'm not a big Jack Black fan. Period. He doesn't do anything for me um, most of the time. But I think he had some some great moments in this film. Yeah, uh, it's funny. I used to work with a guy who I swear to God he was the spitting image of Jack Black. Like it's like he'd just been cloned from him or something. Um, they were even like roughly the same age, same build, and everything. Mm. Man, it was weird. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it just it freaked me out a little bit every time I went into work. That's why I had to kill him and quit. Oh, sorry, just, just quit, just quit. Uh, Night King he, he vanished says, mysteriously, never to yeah. be seen again. <laughs> Don't ask me any more questions about that. Uh, Night King O One says, "You all seen what's been happening with Joel Kinnaman? Nah, what's what's happening with him? I don't know. Let's have a look." Uh, oh shit he's under investigation for grape oh really isn't this this uh, something that's been going on for a few weeks I, I remember something about Joel Kinnaman um, where he was like yeah this 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 woman that I dated once basically tried to like extort me and say that she was going to claim all this stuff if she didn't like get woods of contacts in Hollywood Okay, here it goes. Kinnaman, who's currently engaged to model Kelly Gale, revealed that he had a brief romantic relationship with Magnuson in 2018 when she was single. He said they had consensual sex in November that year and again in December. However, the second time, they did not spend the night together and claims Magnuson was bothered that he didn't ask her to stay. He continued in 2019 and 2020. Bella reassumed contact with me, asking to meet up, but I was in a relationship at this point, so I didn't respond. Given her increasingly obsessive communications, I found it best to cut off all communication with her. But Bella continued to try to communicate with me, texting and calling from other people's phones, and these communications became more and more antagonistic. Kinnaman alleged that Magnuson threatened to publicize false information about him in an attempt to resolve the situation. He and Magnuson had a phone call on July 25th that he said she was aware was being recorded. The actor later added, I wanted to be very clear so there is no misunderstanding. I stand by all victims of assault. That is not what occurred here. This was consensual sex. Magnuson must now stay 100 yards away from Kin... Uh, Kinnaman, while the restraining order also prohibits any contact or and or harassment on her part. Yeah, this this sounds very sounds, uh, sounds like a crazy fan, basically. Yeah, sounds like a nut job woman. Oh, it's Les Grossman. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, Les, a nutless monkey could do my job, man. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like Kinnaman's uh, been on the end of a, a failed me too. Yeah, he's been shafted. On oh, Eunice Stubbs has died. Oh, man. Who's that? Aunt Sally in Wurzel Gummidge. Oh. Uh, oh. That's, that's going back a long way. She was also, uh, she was in, uh, yeah, she played Mrs. Hudson in Sherlock as well. Yeah. Okay. 84. Oh. Good age, though. Good knock. Definitely a good knock. Can't can't say that, but that's a shame. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So for everyone who's uh, watching, I'm just going through the um, the the sort of live chats that I can see as they come up. Like the other ones that I've not been able to access, I will do like a catch up stream with them. So not to worry, they won't be missed. Um, Alex K says, "Fun fact: Robert Downey Jr. was Oscar nominated for this movie. I really hope that's true. I hope he was." Uh, uh, hold on. Uh, it'd be 2009, won't it? 2009 Oscar nominees, um, male uh, actor. I'll just keep going with this while, we're, while you're looking. Um, Unhinged Entertainment says, while we wait, I'll send Drinker more money and show my comic Absolute 2, currently in demand on Indiegogo. So everyone who's watching, look up Absolute 2. 
and support yeah, indi- kind of independent melting. creators. Not in the ma- uh, main, so I'm going to supporting actor. Robert Downey Jr. Tropic Thunder. Really? Was he nominated? Actor in a supporting role. Oh, that's fucking brilliant. Of course, Heath Ledger won for uh, Dark Knight. Yeah, yeah. No, that's fair play. Um, but man, like, uh, imagine the Oscars nominating a guy like that for doing a role like this now. I mean... Not going to happen. When he, when when context is in play, it's a completely different ball game. When you want to be offended, when you want to twist and pervert something, welcome to current day. Yep. By uh, the way, what do you think about this new uh, film coming out with Nicolas Cage where he's got a bomb strapped to his balls? I haven't seen the trailer for it yet, but I just heard that premise and I was like, yeah, I'm in. I'm in. Nicholas yeah. Cage, Bob Balls. Yep, perfect. It's all I've heard, and I'm like, I want to see the film yeah. right now. I just, I love Nicholas Cage. Like, he's just gone full, he's gone full retard he's with gone, his career, yeah. and like, he doesn't regret it in the slightest. I don't he's know how much money cash. he's, yeah, what, what has he done with his money? Because this guy is, he's making anything he can possibly make for, for it's, scratch. It's a combination of buying a bunch of shit he doesn't need uh, and not paying any taxes for about 20 years and then suddenly it all catches up with him. You should have spoken to Wesley. Yeah, he could have clued you in. Could have have sorted you out. Uh, Claudio Rogajan says, School of Rock might change your mind on Jack Black as that's a great comedy movie and you should cover it, drinker. Uh, Yeah, I've seen it. I thought it it was... Probably Jack Black at his best, I guess. Um, I'm still not a huge fan of the guy, but uh, yeah, that's probably the best side of him that you see. Uh, Big Dave K says, I used to feel the same about Jack Black until I saw the movie Bernie. I highly recommend it. Oh. I have not seen Bernie, I'm afraid. Uh, Jack Frostblood says, Jimmy Fox was on Joe Rogan. They talked about how funny the movie is and how it couldn't be made today. Uh, that is four years old, that episode. Yeah, I remember that, actually. Yeah, I remember, I remember that. Jamie Foxx coming out in defense of this and good on the man. Like, that's perfect. Yeah, Jamie Foxx does come across as sound people, though. Yep. Um, Stybeck B says, will you both do the Horace Heresy one day? What, like, the event? Like, do we have to review the entire <laughs> I'll be, thing? I'll be, I'll be Horace, you be the emperor. Yeah. <laughs> Why, Horace? Why have you betrayed me? Ooh, father, I've come <laughs> to kill you! <laughs> Don't make me psychic blast you into oblivion, Horace. I don't want to have to do it. I will stab you with my stab sword of stabbing. Ah, I'm going to have to spend the rest of existence on the golden throne. I fucking hate that thing. (laughs) There you go. We did it. Yeah, there you go. Woo! Where's my Oscar nomination? Yeah. I want a supporting actor nod for that, please. That that was powerful. Powerful stuff. Thank you, man. Uh, I thought you were great. Yeah. (laughs) Alpha Omega... Uh, do you think we'll ever see a blackface wearing Oscar Re- <laughs> blackface wearing Oscar recipient in the future? Probably not. I don't know, unless not. they identify, unless they identify as black. Unless they do, yeah, that probably makes it okay. Because that's say. the next. That's the next thing that's happening, isn't it? As long as they take a knee as well, you'll be all right. You'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, the next one du, du, du. I'm skipping back through here oh yeah here it is um, Dustin Von Allman says drinker you suave Scotsman have you checked out Bosch great writing acting and male protagonist allowed to be a badass and not belittled by the female characters shocked it was made in current day uh, yeah Bosch has got Titus Wallover in it um, I haven't seen much of it myself, but like I just I know that he's in it, uh, and it's like a, a kind of crime drama. Don't know much beyond that, I'm afraid. Don't know if you've seen any of it as. No, but um, if it's a crime drama, I could be in. Mm. Fair I point. like me some crime drama. Yeah. Uh, Jack Sun says, on behalf of my favorite spammer, Serge Perilous, Review The Rock from 1996. It wouldn't Ooh. happen to be related to Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Fantastic movie. It definitely goes in my guilty pleasures list. Love it. Um, Good you've film. got Nick Cage and Sean Connery together, man. What more can you ask for in life? <laughs> yeah. 
He gives good advice for life as well. Losers always whine about their best. Winners go home and fuck the prom queen. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've seen The Rock. So uh, Connor is great in it. He's just having the time of his life, man. Somebody yeah. said, uh, remember they used to say The Rock is, this, is essentially a Bond film? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like Bond the later years. Yeah. It's uh, it's a it's a it's an older James Bond. Connery's playing James Bond, just older. And if that's the case, man, what a way for him to go out because it's a pretty fucking good movie. Mm. You know, and he he gets to be cool one last time and kick some ass. So yeah. I, I would, if that was the goodbye to the Connery Bond, that's all right with me. Uh, Bimbo Lagan says, love listening to your rants while I drone on at my Walmart job. Your magnificent drunken words never fail to make my time feel less like I'm serving a life sentence. Oh, wow. <laughs> Damn. Man. Shit, son. I'll keep doing what you're doing, but maybe look for a new job at the same time, man. I think you're yeah. better than that. Um, your options open, dude. Stephen Lane says, one way to know great art is to spot the stuff that gets better with age. Tropic Thunder is aging very well. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, I laugh more at that than I have a, a comedy for a long time. Yeah. Um, I mean, Suicide Squad made me laugh, like new one. Hmm? Like, that got a few chuckles out of me for sure, but not on the same level as this. This movie properly, like, even though I knew most of the gags from memory, to rewatch it and see it again, like, it still had me laughing out loud. Um, and that is a that is a pretty special thing. That was, I mean, there was just basically raucous laughs in here. I mean, I don't know how many times I, like, raucously laughed at this. Yeah. But there was just sometimes I was just I was just absolutely belly laughing. Yeah. And I, I can't just I cannot legitimately remember a comedy film where I've done that. Yeah, I, I, I laughed a couple of belly laughs at Suicide Squad and a few chuck you know, a few like laughs here and there. But um nothing like Tropic Thunder. Yeah. Uh that is it's it, again, it just makes you feel that you're you're in a different world now. We're in a different world to where we where we used to be. We're in a post entertainment world for the oh, most part. Amen post, to that. Post comedy world, um, and yeah, like if I was a comedian now, like doing stand up or anything like that, I'd be shitting it because I'd be like, "There's nothing I can talk about without getting cancelled. There's no subject that I can broach that uh, is safe anymore." And so, what are you supposed to even do? Well, there was a great tweet that went up today from a, a comedian. Um, called Andrew Lawrence, uh, and his tweet was uh, named "Sexist Racist Comedians," and it's he does a two minute fourteen monologue. I don't know if you want to hear it, where uh, he talks about um, offensive comedy. Can we bring it up without getting yeah. uh, without getting claimed or anything? I don't think you're going to get claimed because it's on uh, it's on his um, it's on his. Uh, uh, Twitter, so yeah. it's out there in the public. So let's. Um, You're able to share it, and I'll see if I yeah, can bring it up. Yeah, let's uh, doosh, 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 doosh. Can go on to full here. And uh, can you hear this? Hi, everyone. Yeah. It's me, Andrew Lawrence. These are very sensitive times we live in. For people who enjoy comedy, it's difficult to know which comedians you can and can't trust. If you choose to follow a comedian on social media or YouTube, or if you choose to go and see them live, all the time you're probably thinking, oh God, I hope they're not going to say anything sexist. I hope they're not going to say anything racist. Well, I just wanted to make this video to assure you all that I will be doing both those things. Don't get me wrong, I've got a lot of black friends, a lot of brown friends, a lot of oriental friends, and they're all cunts, but they're not as good as the white people I know. White people are the cuntiest people, and the cuntiest white people are white women. Middle class <laughs> women with your Me Too movement, and your Time's Up movement, and your tampon tax, and your gap, <laughs> and your patriarchal oppression, and your toxic <laughs> And your man splaining, and your man spreading, and your man flu, and your endless, mindless, whining, fucking bullshit. <laughs> Middle class white women are the cuntiest people. 
disabled people, ginger disabled people, I'm glad they can't walk. Ginger disabled people are so cunty, it's nice to know that if I go upstairs, they can't follow me. And this is all <laughs> environmentalists with your Greta Thunberg, your Extinction Rebellion, your electric cars and your vegan cheese. Environmentalists are the cuntiest people. Here's my message to you if you're an environmentalist. You and I both know the only thinking in this planet is too many people. A surplus of humanity exploiting too much of the Earth's resources. So if you really cared about the future of this planet, you'd kill yourself, your family and all your friends. If you donate your body to medical science so that medical students can experience firsthand, up close and personal, just exactly what the corpse of a sanctimonious cunt looks like. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, whether it's sexism or racism you're after, or just bigotry in general, I've got you covered. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Fucking hell, I'd pay to go see him. I know, I know he's British. I'm like, yes, okay, we're off to see him. <laughs> um Trenton Quinn says, I would pay to see the confused applause of the actors and actresses that had Robert Downey Jr. won that Oscar. Yeah, that'd be brilliant. If it would happen in today as well, that would just be legendary. Oh, yeah. Imagine uh, if it came out, Tropic Thunder came out and it found itself nominated. Oh, God. So it would have been good. Um, Captain Sitforce says, thanks for the live commentary, Drinker and Heels versus Babyface. Really enjoyed it, but sadly got to go to sleep because of early work mornings. Cheers, Aww. mates. Oh, never mind. I hope you get the you get the replay and you can enjoy that. Um, Vitrace says, to this day, I cannot hear the Enigma song without laughing and picturing Kirk Lazarus and MTV Movie Awards <laughs> Best Kiss winner, Toby McGuire. <laughs> 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 Oh, it's epic. Uh, Claudia Rogajan just wanted to know, is Robert Downey Jr.'s accent bad in Sherlock Holmes? What are your guys' thoughts? Um, oh, yeah, it's an English accent. You're it's not right. better than me, man. It's, yeah, it's, it's not bad, actually. It's not it's not bad at all. He's pretty good with his accents. Uh, especially for a guy from, you know, what, the turn of the century? So, I mean, mm. accents would have gradually changed over time anyway, so I'd, I'd be fine with it. Uh... Nice Lazarus, what a name! It's, it's awesome. It's perfect. Uh, oh Christ, there's more. Uh, Worm, yeah, Wormy Spoon says uh, I sent you a copy of my screenplay via email. Hopefully, you get some feedback. Uh, any chance? I appreciate you're a busy guy. We'll send whiskey. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I will look into that and uh, I will get back to you. Um, Jonas Larson says Malcolm X had two Academy of nominations. Talcum X will win for sure. Talcum X. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Monty, sorry, Monty LC2001 says, I've become a big fan of drinker the past couple of months. Happy to donate. Ever seen Murphy's War with Peter O'Toole? Would love to see your take on it. Uh, no, I haven't seen that one, actually. So I don't know, man. Peter O'Toole's a great actor, though. Yeah, I, I have. A long time ago, mine, but uh, yeah, I saw Murphy's Law. Nice. Is it good? Uh, I, I I remember. I don't remember thinking anything bad about it. I think it was fine. Cool. Um, Marcel Davis says, Drinker, have you seen the Bodyguard series with Richard Madden as the lead character? And if so, what's your opinion on the series? If not, it's worth watching. Uh, yeah, I have seen it. Um, I thought it was pretty good. Um, it was. It kind of went downhill after the the secretary that he was protecting got killed. Uh, once she was assassinated, um, and it was just him on his own, it, it kind of didn't work that great. But um, overall, it was it was probably worth watching. I would say. Um, Roger P says, "Would you do a greatest comedies review? Blazing Saddles and Airplane, and have Az and someone else for a third or <laughs> threesome? I'd watch the hell out of that. God, there's so many to choose from, eh? I'd have to do like a countdown or something. Um, and I, I, I mean, yeah, oh God, look, there's too, there's so many sucker stuff, which is amazing. We'd, we'd either have to like." do the whole of the naked gun or do the whole of the 
uh, airplane or, or something, but uh, or just do a maybe a top ten Zuckerberg. Uh, Zuckerberg. No, 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 Zuckerberg. Not Zuckerberg at all. A top he 10. doesn't do comedy. <laughs> well, not intentional comedy anyway. No. Uh, Zucker Brothers, like Zucker Brothers slash Abraham's um, comedies, maybe. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Frozen in the 80s says, Drinker and Az, have you heard any buzz about the new Dexter series coming out soon? Is anyone even excited about Lumberjack Dexter? Um, so... This is going to be retconning like the final season of Dexter, isn't it? And and just totally rewriting it because I believe that was a total farce, uh, and everyone hated it. And so they're just going to re redo it, basically. Um, I don't, I don't know what they're going to do. Um, as far as I'm aware, they're still going to have what happened remain in the final season. Um, Deb's dying and stuff like that. I, I think it's meant to be a literal a continuation from where it left off, but I think I think what they're going to do is they're going to try and drag Dexter's past to up to the lumberjack place, where uh, he's going to get he's going to get uh, potentially hunted uh, for being the um, the Bay Harbor butcher. Okay, uh, which would be interesting if they if they decided to do that. I'm I'm definitely willing to give it a go. I loved early Dexter. Uh, yeah, the latter seasons were not great, um, but I was a huge Dexter fan to start with, and, and uh, I, I'd I, I want this to work. You know, I don't want Dexter to suddenly be like, "Oh, I'm going to be killing our local conservative members." Or so. Oh, no, no, uh, no. I, I do want this to to hopefully go back to um, a little bit more classic Dexter. Yes, yeah. I mean, I was never massively into Dexter back in the day, so I don't really have that that background of it. But uh, I, I've not heard much in the way of, you know, buzz around this. I just, I'm just me. looking at. I think the the uh, the Murphy's Law that I think I watched was the uh, Bronson, the Charles Bronson one, uh, not the Pedro, uh, not the Pedro two one. So I think that's what I'm. Right. I'm thinking. I'm thinking about when it comes to Murphy's Law. Um, Finkelstein shit kid said, saw your review of Invasion of the Body Snatchers, which scared the crap out of me as well. Yeah, I was like fucking seven years old when I saw that or something. That oh. traumatized me. <laughs> um, have you seen Alice, Sweet Alice? No, I, I've never heard of that one. I've, no. Have not seen that one. Um, Baybren314 says, consider reviewing Birdman or The Unexpected Virtue of Ignorance. Very metaphorical about creators versus critics and only has uh, two obvious camera cuts. Yes, yeah. Uh, Birdman would definitely be a good one to look at. Great film. I love that. Uh, yep. Uh, uh, I'm just going to be two minutes, okay? Yeah, no worries, man. Uh, where's the next one? Yeah, Night King 01 says, Have you seen The Seventh Seal? I may sound like a snobbish movie buff, but it's an incredible film. It's where the knight plays chess with death. Yeah, that's uh, Max von Sydow, um, who does it, I believe. Um, and, you know, it's funny, I got that reference way back in the day because it was referenced in fucking Last Action Hero, uh, of all things. And that's where death kind of comes out of that movie and starts stalking everyone around the, the, the rest of the film. Um but yeah, I've never seen the original Seventh Seal, uh, and I feel bad about that. So I need to give it a go sometime. It would be interesting to review like proper art house movies like that. Um, Black Tiger O One says, "Would you review my favorite Valentine's movie, The Thomas Crown Affair? Pierce Brosnan heist film. I absolutely love. Yeah, it was Pierce Brosnan and Rene Rousseau, I believe, back in the day. Uh, I quite liked it. Yeah, it's just your standard heist movie. Good cast, uh, pretty good script, as I remember. Solid film." Um, J-Dub is a shill says the fact that RDJ learned another language is epic this movie comedy wise is my top 5 with Blazing Saddles and Harlem, Harlem Nights my favourite part is RDJ and Toby this movie is absolutely nuts it really is um, and he, he made the film for me 100% um, ZSL uh, sorry XSL says ideal 22, 2022 casting uh, same movie only Cruise stays um, damn who else would be put in it I need to get as in on this one I think we said that Chris Pratt would be a good choice for one of them if you're looking for like an agent action star that's kind of um, past it now 
damn. Would it get? Would it be too meta to pick an actual action hero? Uh, if I was, it would probably be like, um, fuck. Who's the guy that was in like three hundred? Um, anyway, that Scottish actor that was in three hundred, and he's basically been doing like low budget action movies ever since then. Um, as for the rest of them, man, Jack Black's not even that old. I feel like he could still do it. Um, and for pretentious, like, thespian actors, damn, who's ever going to equal Robert Downey Jr. in a role like that? Uh, nah, it, it's it's tough to reimagine, like, casting this movie again, to be honest with you, because it just seems like it had the, the perfect balance of actors in it. Um, I don't know if there's an equivalent to them nowadays. Um J Train says, Drinker, do you plan on making a video or stream for the show Invincible? Thought it was amazing and love your work. Cheers, mate. Uh, yeah, like I was saying, um, I definitely plan on watching it and I'll get it reviewed one way or another. I think it'll probably be a proper review. Uh, Claudia Rogajan, uh, you guys should cover the Meet the Parents hilarious film. Also, Ben Stiller, one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not a massive Ben Stiller fan. Um, I liked him in Dodgeball. Um, Meet the Parents was fine. He was very much played the straight man in that. Uh, Monkey Draws says, Hey, as a drinker, here's to this video's monetization. Rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, it definitely will. Um, we used the R word too many times. Tad's Girl says, When will your nobody review come out, drinker? We love that movie. Uh, yeah, um, it's, it's definitely something I'm working on. Basically, other stuff got in the way of it, um, and I wanted to get that out first because nobody felt like one that could go on the back burner for a little while. Uh, but yeah, it'll definitely get reviewed. Uh, sorry, I'm just scrolling back here. Oh, you hear us? Uh, Mala says, uh, When are you going to do a review of Bachelor Party? It's when Tom Hanks used to be good. Oh, man, there's just so many. There's so many old movies I've, I've got to look at. Yeah, people are saying in chat as well, Jared Butler um, to, to replace Ben Stiller's character in a recast version of this. Yeah, Jared Butler. <laughs> Scotsman! Yeah. yeah. Um, I was trying to think of like an action star that's kind of like past his prime and he's just doing loads of shit movies now. And yeah, Jared Butler's got to be him. Yeah, he's doing some uh, straight-to-DVD stuff, isn't he? Lots of it, yeah. Yeah, um, I quite like Greenland. I'll give them that. I thought that was all right. Uh, what's the next one? Uh, Patrice says, I wonder if a lot of people that didn't get the satire of the meta comedy in this movie also didn't get Cabin in the Woods. Ah, uh, yeah, they probably wouldn't oh. because they don't understand things. <laughs> I think Belle's trying to kill me. My cat. What? What's that? Sorry. I think my cat's trying to kill me. All right. <laughs> she's she's attacking you. Yeah, well, she's taking up residence on my top step. Uh -oh. and she, she hasn't moved for 24 hours now. Holy apart, shit. A, apart from to eat or drink. I was going to say, like, are you sure she's still alive? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Apart from to eat or drink. Oh, okay, and yeah, uh, yeah, when I when I like go to go down the stairs, she's just like, "Fucking go around me, bitch." Yeah, <laughs> she ain't moving. Um, Lazy Ladjack says, uh, "Ever watch RDJ and Kiss Kiss Bang Bang? Awesome flick." Yes, absolutely. Um, great movie. Um, and yeah, he was good in it. Um, Dan, I've Levitt. not seen it, but I've heard it's good. No, oh, it is. It's worth your worth your time. Um, Dan Levitt. Bangkok Wolves says, would you recommend Gladiator or watch it again? <sighs> Maximus, love watching and enjoying your channel. All the best from Thailand. Oh, yes, oh, Thailand. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would definitely recommend Gladiator. It's a great movie and great. Probably like the career making performance for Russell Crowe. Uh, yeah, I, it's his uh, seminal piece. Um, it's an incredible film. It's Ollie Reed's Goodbye. Uh, uh, Joaquin Phoenix is great in it as well. It's yeah, I could I could watch Gladiator every day. It's just one of those films, evergreen films. Yeah, I could just watch it at any time uh, and be massively entertained by it. Um, yeah, beautiful, brilliant film, beautiful film. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, Kyrie he says, uh, have either of you watched Excalibur from 1981? Patrick Stewart, Liam Neeson, and Nicole Williamson are in it. Both uh, Love both of your channels. Uh, yeah, I have watched Excalibur. It's it's an interesting movie because it takes it really serious, the whole legendary oh. stuff. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's, it's kind of not what you'd expect from a movie of that time period. But, yeah, I liked it. I liked it. Yeah, I I th- first time I saw it was uh, I was probably... 10 or less than 10 uh, and we were kind of expecting a more traditional Arthurian legend uh, film and yeah it's it's very serious, it's very violent it's very bloody especially the end, holy yep. shit yeah. <laughs> that, is, that is a literal bloodbath at the end Yeah. Um, and it's great I, I think it's absolutely great, I really do yeah, it's got quite a bleak tone to it as well. You Very. Know, the, yeah, God. Um, no, it's, not, it's not a movie to, to, to see if you want cheering up. <laughs> no, definitely not. Um, Frozen in the 80s. Says, <laughs> yeah. Drinker, nobody's asking you the really hard questions. Who would win in a slap fight between Tila or Abby? Whoa. Damn, they both got some serious bulk going on. I think they mm. could put a lot of weight behind their slaps, but um, yeah, I think Tila would probably. I think Tila would probably take it. Well, ever since Kevin Smith said that Tila is more the equal of He Man, without being that, powered um, up, yeah, without being powered up, I would say Tila would probably sn- slap Abby's head off. Yeah. In, in today's list of bullshit things that Kevin Smith says to try and get some flight. Yeah, there you go. Tila's Please like, just hire yeah. me to do stuff. <laughs> yeah, he just so wants to be in that Hollywood machine. I think it was It's a Gundam that said like his talent has deflated at the same rate that he's lost weight. Mm. And it's like, where did you store your brains, man, in your fucking gut? <laughs> like, he sold it. Well, he definitely stored his soul in there. I'll tell you that for nothing. I know. Oh man, he's just a he's a shell of a man these days. It's sad. It really is. Shell in a shell. Yeah. Uh, Marksman of 117B says, Have you not seen the Irish monster movie Grabbers? It was made for you and inspired by Hot Fuzz. Such a fun movie. Uh, I think you've mentioned this before, so I'll need to give it a look. Hmm. Uh, Al Yosha says, uh, did you get a chance to watch The Guard? Not the old guard, but just the guard. I don't believe so. Um, what is that? Hold on, I'm going to look it up. The guard. The guard. All right. Uh, okay, so it's a Irish buddy cop crime comedy written and directed by John Michael, Mike, starring Brendan Gleeson, John Cheadle, and Mark <laughs> Strong. Damn, Brendan that's a good cast. Dude, yeah. <laughs> I like Mark Strong. I'm a big Mark Strong. I like him. Yeah. Oh, it's even got Liam Cunningham in it as well. Man, Obviously. I'm definitely going to have to watch that. Good all the Irish in. Yeah. Uh, what's... Surprised it hasn't got uh, Chris Rea. Is it Chris Rea in it as well? Yeah. Uh, what's the next one? Yeah, George says, have you seen Lucky Number Slevin? Yes, I have. Uh, Willis, Hartnett, Kingsley, Freeman, Tucci, and Lucy Liu. Gangster Revenge Story, dark comedy, great performances. Yeah. Um, can't argue with any of that, actually. Pretty much sums it up. Good film. Uh, I think I really like Joss Hartnett as well. He's kind of faded into obs- obscurity the past few years, but yeah, he used to be quite good. Yeah, he has. Yeah, he's a biggie, wasn't he? He's on the verge of kind of like breaking out and then just sort of subsided don't know what happened to him he just kind of died to death um leo film says drinker one day you have to do beowulf with christopher lambert christ if it's got him in it then it's got to be good (laughs) Uh, right oh boy uh, Douglas Burton says, Drinker, would you ever consider a happy hour with multiple drinking buddies for good fellas? Uh, yes, I would. I would always consider that kind of thing. Um, That's a great film. Holy shit, that film, man. Yeah. Uh, Norrin Rad says, The Hobbit was a good movie, bro. You're messing with my childhood. <laughs> How can The Hobbit be your childhood? Jesus, you must be like 10 years old or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Ah, uh, yeah, I didn't like the Hobbit trilogy. Fucking what a letdown compared to Lord of the Rings. Yeah, and I just recently rewatched the whole of the Lord of the Rings as well. So good. But I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't do that with the Hobbit again. No, nah. it would just make me feel tired and sick a little bit. Yeah, and angry probably. <laughs> yeah. Why uh, are you falling in love with that little thing? Yeah, oh, it's so stupid. Uh, All bad. Brian Why Pettis- did the second film stop just out of nowhere? <laughs> I know. That is absolutely... Like, you could have condensed this all into one movie and it would have been great, but like three films is just a joke. Well, it's uh, only meant to be two to start with, wasn't it? It's meant to be two. And then I mean, they, it should uh, have just been one. Yeah, it should have been one, but they said it was going to be two and then they pushed it into three. Jesus. That's greed for you. Uh, Brian Presgrove... Have you watched the 2020 dark comedy The Hunt? Action, guns, and just fun to watch? Uh, no, not not yet. Um, Carpal Tumble, can we get a shout out for the book of Ben Stiller's agent is reading Big Book of Breasts? <laughs> <laughs> I actually do love the conversation he's having with Tug as well, where Tug's trying to adopt a, a kid, and he's like, uh, at least you get to choose yours. So it's just a yeah. picture of him and his son. And then at the end... When he's on the private jet and his son's with him, and it, and it's like hitting all the characters, and it's you know Matthew McConaughey, and it goes to his son, and it goes boom, no name, yeah, nothing, <laughs> just, just looking out of the window like that, you know, yeah. <laughs> oh god, that was great. Uh, Joseph Benowitz says the animated Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. Oh Christ, that's a trip and a half. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, Dwek says, "Drinker, have you ever seen a grown man naked or been in a Turkish prison?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> airplane man, airplane, fucking brilliant. Yeah, yeah, Jimmy, have you ever Jimmy. seen a grown man naked? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in a Turkish prison. <laughs> uh, Valeria, Valeria Martinez says, "Hey, drinker, would you ever do a scary horror movies? And are you interested in international films? Have you seen Julia's Eyes or Wild Tales? Love the." What is that? Love the channel. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I, every Halloween I do like another round of horror movies, so I'll, I'll have a bunch more waiting for you come October. Uh, Dan Lovett, Bangkok Wolf says, best and worst ever Nicolas Cage movie. Shit. There's so many. I mean, the worst one's got to be fucking um, The Wicker Man. Oh, I don't know. Um, there was one that I saw him in uh i'm gonna try and find find it uh at least the wicked man is like ridiculously entertaining in as much as it's fucking mental oh yeah uh the one that i saw him in was a christian movie right uh and i'm trying to find if i can Le- uh is it left behind is he the pilot is that where yeah 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 left behind holy shit he's a pilot it? and then the rapture happens right exactly <laughs> okay and then you know people are just like vanishing because they've gone to heavens and then all the people who were you know, not worthy to go to the heavens are left behind. And Nicolas Cage is, is one of them. He's not even the main character in the film. It's, and God, it's even, God. I think it's got Leia Thompson. It's got Leia Thompson in it as well. Oh, Christ, that's a blast from the past. I know. Um, Marty McFly's mum. If, if I had to stick another candidate for worst Nick Cage movie, it would be Ghost Rider as well. Because... <gasps> That was god awful. How dare you? I I did it. How dare you? How dare you? Uh, but the the question is, what's his best one? Oh, I, I liked leaving Las Vegas. That was fantastic. Con Air is amazing. Face off is great. Face off. Um... Interview? No, is it interview with the vampire? No, uh, what, what am I thinking of? 
He's not in No, no. no. I, I, I would say Raising Arizona is another great one. Lord of War, Wild yeah, at Heart. Wild there are some. He's been in some absolute doozies. The problem is he's just not been in any good ones really in the past twenty years. That's where he's he's fallen. Bad fallen lieutenant. Yeah. Um. National Treasure. I do love the National Treasure movies. <laughs> I mean, they're all right. That was Nick Cage in normal mode, where he's just like, yeah, he's okay. I, I like Gone in sixty seconds. I really liked that movie. I'm going to say The Rock. <laughs> Best Nick Cage movie. Um, I, I think uh, I would put him in, in Face Off because he looked like he was having more fun in that. <laughs> and he just, and it, uh, that, that bit where he grabs the, the choir girl from behind by the ass and just like... <laughs> 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 It's worth it just for that moment. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, they don't make him like that no more. No, no. We've... <laughs> oh, Nick Cage, we've missed you. Uh... Yeah, not the bees. God, he's in so much stuff coming out. I know. He's doing about 12 movies a year. He got to uh... yeah. pay them taxes. Uh, Frank Passato says uh, best war comedy movies are this and Kelly's Heroes. Yeah. Both oh. Great films. Uh, Claudio Rogajan, did you guys notice that Zack Snyder just ripped off the ending of Excalibur in Batman, Batman versus Superman? You know when they stab each other. Oh, Christ. I mean, it wouldn't put me, I wouldn't put it past him, really. Zack Snyder. I think it's a bit of a trope now, anyway. Yeah. Uh, the, old double, the old double stab. Get so many great Nick Cage movies. Uh, Bradley163 says, Drinker, your content makes the world a better place. Thank you for all you do. Thank you Yay. very much, man. Uh, yeah, I think that's me caught up. So, yeah, listen, like, obviously, there's a few super chats that I've kind of missed out on because they, they were at the start of the stream. So, when YouTube finally restores access, um, and I can get back in. I will just do a catch up stream to just go through them. So, um, yeah, that way none of them will get missed. It's just I'll have to wait until I can actually get them and bring them up here. Oh, there's two more actually that have just come in. Uh, Dead Turret says, Drinker, have you guys ever watched uh, Loving Vincent? It's that movie where every frame is an oil painting. Uh, no, <laughs> no, I'm afraid I haven't. Um, and Outcast Creative, Drinker, you don't forget the film I sent you with Jason Fleming, The Journey, shot on a Greek island. I introduced him to your channel. He's a fan. Nice. Jason Fleming. Um, Claudia Rogajan, Excalibur is one of Zack Snyder's favorite movies. Well, that explains a lot. Then. Oh, maybe then. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Neil Oakley. All right, users, Wild at Heart. This is a snakeskin jacket, and for me, it's a symbol of my individuality and my belief in personal freedom. Um... Yeah, there we go. All right, cool. Yeah, man. Um, as I just want to say thanks, mate, for coming on for this stream. Like to be able to talk about Tropic Thunder with you is like I couldn't have picked anyone that I'd rather do this with. <laughs> it's it's great. It's sad at the same time to look because it's almost like we're we're lamenting it. It's almost like it was awake in a way of of what movies used to be and how movies used to entertain us and um what happens when you make a movie when you're not concerned that petty people are going to be offended? Yeah. Uh, you know, you're always going to get a little bit of outcry from the pill clutchers, sure. But the pill clutchers, once upon a time, just used to be the minority who you just pointed and laughed at. Nowadays, the pill clutchers are the majority, which is such a such a shame. But it's yeah. a great film. It's uh, it's not an offensive film, contrary to, to popular belief. Uh, it's poking fun at uh, the studio system, at, at, at actors, at the insecurity, at Oscar bait. And uh, it's not done in a malicious way. I, I don't, you know, if you take something personal in this film, there's something wrong with you. Nobody's pointing a finger and going, hey, this is you. Uh, so God bless Tropic Thunder. It will forever be in, a, in my Hall of Fame of movies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... 
I just, yeah, I, I don't think I can even add anything to that. Like this movie just makes me happy. The mm. fact that it got made, the fact that it will always exist, um, the fact that they got such an amazing cast in to do this, and everyone just seems to have an absolute blast with it. Um, you can't help but enjoy this movie. Um, it was a real pleasure to watch, and it was a pleasure to be able to talk about it here. Um, mm. Yeah. I, I can only hope that one day movies like this are allowed to get made again. But for the time being, at least we've got great films like this that got made and will always be there no matter what. So um, I'm fully, fully satisfied with that, at least. Um, yeah, it's just going to take some brave people outside of the studio. Not, not necessarily brave, but it's just going to take some people outside of the studio system uh, to say, hey, let's just make a let's just make a film. Yeah. Let's just make a film. You know, you're not that have to copy Tropic Thunder or anything like it, but just go out and make a film. You know, without without the uh the the um committee, without that sort of construction, without worried about, oh well, we need to tick these boxes to make it qualify for awards or anything like that. Just just some people to go and say, Hey, I I got a vision. I know what I want to do, I want to make a film. And when enough people start doing that, I think, uh, who knows, people's interest in, in other stuff may wane. Yeah. That'd be nice if that finally happened. I know. But yeah, I mean, for uh, for everyone else that's joined us tonight, like, thank you to all you guys. Thanks for everyone in chat. And thank you for all the super chats. Uh, like I said, any ones that I've not been able to access tonight, I will get them done in a separate stream. Uh, I'll do a catch-up stream. So none of them will get missed, but uh, yeah, I appreciate all your generosity and, and thank you guys for tuning in. It's been great, um, but we'll we'll probably finish up. So um, for everyone who's listening, subscribe to Heel vs. Babyface. He does awesome content that genuinely makes me laugh. And like the thing I appreciate about your stuff, man, is that it's off the cuff and it's so genuine. You know, it, it's so heartfelt and... and um, you know, I can tell that you you really feel passionately about all the stuff that you talk about, and that's what makes it good. That's what makes it so interesting to watch. Oh, cheers, man! No, all it's right. it's really appreciated, and uh, I'm sure there's lots of fans that you've got in the the chat already. Uh, but yeah, if anyone somehow isn't subscribed to Heel versus Babyface, please give him a look because he does awesome stuff. But anyway, that we'll is get all that we get to a million subs. Hey, so. we'll get there. So close! You're getting so close now. Uh, but yeah, that is all we've got for today, so we're going to go away now. <laughs>